Hello, I hope you had a wonderful day. Today we are going to have a very, very long stream, I guess, because I've managed to stream at 12, um, 12 a.m., which is a little bit early. Uh, well, it's on the weekend. That's where I usually don't have that much to do, but still an achievement because I think um, normally I'm um, a little bit always in my, in my workout routine, uh, having to tidy up uh, my, my rooms and doing a lot of stuff and i'm really happy that i have the the um opportunity to today to have a really long stream and start early so yeah let's get going so last time um last time we were in this uh, scene here and we have set up our brush and um our time map so we can easily go into see there's no there's no active time map right here that we, we want to use but we have to done some preparation here we go into the book grid and here we have um the foregrounds the backgrounds you can drag in there shifting a, a shifting assets template and we set set this up. I worked on this yesterday, but unfortunately, yesterday I first wanted wanted to to do some code, and it took longer than I expected, and then stream. And after I did the code, I didn't have much time left to to uh, stream. Would have been an, a half a, a half an hour stream, and uh, that wouldn't have been worth it. But yesterday I did some coding work. I can in, initialize this time map. Let's call it Vox Zero. I can give it a sorting order, order in layer, and a parallax speed. Let's put it to five. It's going to put uh, to put the the um, template right here. But the template has set up everything that it needs to, and we could you now um, by by hand change these points. But what we actually want to do is click here on set up parallax transform. And now we immediately see that it did make a second reference point. So what do these points mean? At first, um, I also have made a new option here. Let's, let's make uh, that these two points are um, um, at a diff different position. Let's put this to 20. Now you see the height changed. And also the um, the distance between the, those two points. So, what is, what is all this information that we are getting here? If I start to paint some rocks into this grid, and set up parallax transform, now you see what what the hell happened here. Now we have this rock here three times, this rock three times, this rock is three times. Um, we don't want to have this in the game, but when, when I press, press play, only one rock will, will remain. See, there's only one, one rock left. We also see that it's shifting to the right. Why is that though? so? It's because um, we did give it a positive value. So a positive value means to the right, a negative value means to the left, and probably we will only use negative values here. But it's about correct. Now I'm still not sure which uh, speeds are uh, good for which axis. Um, the problem is if you um, have a speed that is to this direction, and then put some um, some other layers that is into and then go into the other direction, then it looks like the camera is um, turning. Uh, is rotating around the character. But in this, this game we are going from left to right, so this is why um, I probably will not use positive values. Maybe they will all be negative, so they will all shift 
to, to the left. Okay. Now let's go on. Also, <clears throat> I have some kind of cold, I'm not sure. I got some milk and honey right here. Okay, now what are, are these points doing? I can show them very easily. The center. If you're here in the center, this green point is the center position. The template will look like this. If you are at this position, the template will look like this. I confirm this. If we are at the left position, this one, the time map will look like this. And if we are in the right position, the time map will look like this. Why do we need, do we have these functions? I don't know. I maybe overdid it um, with the control, but the idea behind them is you set them up and um you you're going i'm going i would uh, to have a lot of layers in the in the game and i want to have easy control over them and i want to see how is the time map looking when i'm standing at this position and this position these two player positions they're roughly the maximum width that you should should um use for for one of these time maps because um when I try to do the, the the same time map here and here, um it's going to shift so much that that, that it will be very hard to to uh, see where the um works will be when the player is here, when he is here, where he's here. So you you would put put up one time up here, one here, one here. And these player reference points are roughly one screen length length a little bit one and a half i would say so um that's a realistic um width of the time map mm. i'm not going to make them much wider okay so what else can we do here now this looks like it is pretty finished one thing I could do is um, I could improve the script a little bit. Now I can control uh, Z when I initialize a new time map, uh, all new time maps, um, and then it will put it to um, and 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 that it will just reverse everything, and um, that is because I have written this editor script. To register all the things that, that we do and have an undo here. And we could optimize this. Um, which I don't have the time to do to right now. But we could also um, do this with the other uh, functions here. I'm not really into that, <laughs> to be honest. I'm, I'm really, really not into that right now. One object that we have to to record here.
Let's go into the API. And I, I want to do the other functions. This function uh, is the main function, and I need to record that. <clears throat> And we they just have to say record object. It's a little bit unfortunate that we don't don't need to stop coding in this. Um, a little bit unfortunate because I think I could could improve the code a little bit. We have a lot of code here. These are three hundred handcrafted lines that I did put a lot of effort in. But I need to to start painting soon and. This code is not going going to get better by um, making it more stylish. <laughs> so here, I need to record um, this object. <laughs> this one. And give it a name. Okay, that's it. And the name here is basically if you if you click undo, then this this string will be displaced on the on the top left here, um, inside of the editor. No, I can't get into the editor because it's loading right now. Here, for example, undo make center points. I didn't didn't really understand what what, what this string was for and, uh, un, until I, I saw this in here. Maybe could then could, could give it better names, but normally I don't go into edit and click this. I I just um, use Control Z and Control Y. Uh, so yeah, I I don't think it's 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 that important. <laughs> Especially since I'm the only person that uses this script. Now, the script <clears throat> that I did here might be interesting for some people to sell on, on the marketplace in Unity. Um, but I'm not too sure if it, it's uh, if, if anybody would, would buy this. You could just put it in there and maybe, maybe someone will, will pick it up. It also depends a lot on, on the marketplaces, how things are selling. Um, this is a parallax setup, and I'm pretty sure if you... Let's see how many parallax setup, uh, parallax assets are there, out there. Um, Unity Asset Store. And this is just a tip for, for people. Um, if you if you do everything by yourself and you do you're kind of open source like me you can also just try to sell some stuff of your of your game so let's look into a relax yeah and you immediately see um, does it show how many results 304 results so good luck with that um Show, uh, showing up in inside of this um, asset asset store um, list here, and the user is go oh, just going to click on on the best clickbait, and yeah, that's not really my style. But as I said, it it doesn't hurt you to just put it out there. You don't even have to make um. Uh, advertisement, you just can put it out there and try to sell it. Maybe it will sell. And I also don't know which uh, 
kind of uh, what kind of sorting we have here. So this was by popularity. I'm a little bit um, confused. But these are less popular. These. I mean, the first one here, I have to say, this this has the... Uh, this thumbnail is the one that I dislike the most, and it's the most popular. Hmm. Maybe because it stands out. Yeah, I think that's it, because it stands out with the with its look. White background. And then we have demo. Well, we can look into, into the demo just to see how they are shifting the game. I also want to, to know which, which speeds um, they use. Parallax effect speeds. Maybe something that you want to look up at YouTube before we do our own, own experimentation. I also want to get some music. So yeah, let's try to not, not call today. Something I usually don't say. <clears throat> so this is just the website yeah these are the uh, websites Interestingly though, if you look at this, you see that the tree is moving to the um, right a little bit. And you might say, hey, well, what are you saying? It's, it's moving to the left, obviously. Yes, but compared to the uh, layer of grass that the bicycles are moving, it's moving to the right. That's interesting. Okay, but the, it looks like, like people are more interested in um, Uh, websites here and these are all all websites Well, this is a good demonstration of how we um, measure speed. He zooms in, it looks way, way slower. And when he zooms out, he really feels the speed. But if he zooms in, you don't feel the speed. That's interesting. Maybe look into this. Just, just don't want Guarded to hear anything. Barbs. Want to become famous by viewers, followers, and primes on your follows com.
And I deleted that message immediately from the chat. Okay, now I want to go, go back here. So what, what I'm comparing now is, are the background and foreground move objects moving to the left or right compared to the layer the player is standing on? And um, now it looks like every layer is moving to the right compared to the layer the um, player is standing on. Never to the left. So I think this is the, the best example here. So if you would be standing on this layer, every layer in front of you would have a negative speed. Every every layer behind that has a positive speed. Okay, so, so, so is that, that's something. As I just said, um, every layer will, will, will probably have a negative speed. That's wrong. I was wrong. And I'm really sorry. The um, Every layer behind you will have a will have a positive speed. And uh, in, in this instance, here it's just pla playing out uh, 3D. I think the character is 2D though. Okay, there's also movement in the the cloud layers, which can add some kind of three dimensionality. Oh, and the water. 
And the water here looks like it's 3D. It's probably a trick. And you you see every layer in the back is moving a little bit slower. Now they should never never move uh, slower than, than the uh, player though, I think. So um now the, you shouldn't see any background just catching up to the, to the player and um, being faster than the player. That is the only thing I think that is out of question. Oh, that's beautiful. There's multiple layers for, for the wheat. Okay, that's 3D. But I, I think we understood the concept every time. So every, everything be behind this layer is going to move into the right direction and everything in, the, in, in front of it is going to have a negative speed because the speed is compared to the camera speed and that is basically what the the layer you are standing on is okay so I think to understand that so let's try to do this with the background first and we have a lot of templates in here um let's maybe let's rename this one Let's enable these and we need th this one to have order in layer minus 50 so we know what we're doing here now i don't know what if i what happens if i press this is going to, to start from bottom or from top let's see what happens box zero uh minus 40 let's speed 10 oh it it, it just starts um, somewhere in the middle um okay box zero sorting order one order and layer is minus 30 I will have to rearrange them nonetheless. And um, I don't pay attention to the speed right now. Just 
just want to give them the correct um, um, name. Oh, come on. Damn it. I forgot something. Okay, I need to go, go to the toilet real quick and I'll be right back.
Okay, yeah, I'm back. And one thing I forgot is I'm not go going to assign them all to walks. Um, layer one is going to be bushes. So let's name this bushes. So the naming convention is maybe a little bit weird. Hmm. I think I think because these are not bushes zero, they are bushes on position zero. So yeah, I have to keep that in mind. That's interesting how how these um, messages are are displayed. Maybe maybe let's fix fix that so it says position zero. Instead of zero, because if you, if you have bushes uh, zero, one, two, three, you you expect them to to be unique, but they aren't. The these number behind the um, behind the name is um, basically um, the position. It's not um, a un unique identifier. So name of the time map, time map plus zero. So, so now you would like this, plus zero. I, now, now you could guess and this is supposed to be the um, position, okay. We're learning, we are learning. <laughs> so let, let's first change this name then. Boss Zero. Copy this boss. Also change it inside of the actual time app. The other is just a placeholder. This just this one is just for the hierarchy, so you have this nicely in, inside of the hierarchy. And they are all position zero. Okay, now we fix that. We still have to fix. They are not all rocks. What does it say? Uh, ordering layer zero. Oh, I think I, I and um and uh, did did put put the number in there by hand. Yeah. Okay. Now I have to put thirty to number three, ten to one, twenty to two. 40 to 4. That's when we name the back ones layer here. Zero. Minus 10. So we, we actually know they are order and layer just by looking at them. Okay. Now let's get to the next thing. Bushes. These are going to be trees. And then we will have more bushes. 
bushes. I don't know what 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 is this bush or bush? I don't know. And then it will be trees again. And guess what? After that come bushes. Oh no, cop copy trees. Bushes. Not bushes. Bushes. Okay. Let me see here how, uh, real quick how they are pronunciated. Um, are they bushes or bushes? Bush. 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 Okay. They are bushes. Okay. Sometimes English is a little bit weird the, with the pronunciation. Okay. <clears throat> they are bushes. Now we can see here that they've all been sorted by their um, actual uh, shifting speed. Now we want to change this. And how do we do this? Um, actually, I want to, to be able to click on this and then set up the, the um, point of distance. Oh, I can actually. I think if we look into into the um, children. So this is the one furthest in the back. So will it be fast or slow? Um, first one in the back. Is it going to be faster or slower? I think it's going to be faster. Now you might say, hey, it's moving into that direction. Yes, but it's also moving with the camera and we have to, the speed is relative to the camera speed. That's why it's positive. The real speed is negative. If you look at um, the, the, um, no, the, the speed related to the camera is negative, but the real speed is positive. So, okay. So we have five layers. So we can, let's, let's just say we are going to increase the speed by five. So it's going to be five, five, 10, 15, uh, 20, 25. And okay. Two, three, four, but these are six. So it would be 30. 30. No exception. Okay. <clears throat> now we have the, to, to set them up first, I guess. And can we now do that? No, another null exception. I think it's because I'm not on the template. Yeah, this is not going to cause a null exception. Well, let's go through the level and see how it looks. And they should, should move really fast to the right position. Let's see if they catch up to the player, which is what, what is not supposed to happen. No, they're not faster than the player. That's the only important thing here. Yeah, now it looks a little bit weird that they are um, shifting there, but it's going to look better the more layers of, um, of stones that you use. If you have more layers, it's going to look better. Trust me. <laughs> okay. Um... So this is a null except causes a null exception. Um, if you don't select, <clears throat> if you don't say uh, select um, them correctly.
so let's first just try to get their their um, parallax transform. Let's rename this one into Parallax Game Objects. Game Objects. Parallax Transforms. This will just have the children of this. Ah. But these are multiple uh, objects, so we have to go through them. Eh? Okay, I get it. It's a little bit... So we need four each first. And this is going to be a list. What does I say? Let's not code today. Yeah, I lied pretty pretty fast. I guess. For each um relax in transform that we find inside of here. It components and children. <clears throat> so we just want to get every parallax transform that we have selected or as um, part of our selection or inside the hierarchy underneath them. So we don't have to specifically uh, have the op correct object. And then we just make a list with all the objects that we have found. Let me check if this is null. So if the transforms, the length of the account of the list is equal to zero, we're going to, to display a message to the uh, end return. So let me see how to, to make this message. We had a message inside of here already. Kind of an error message. Yeah, this one. So where were we? I, I lost uh, I lost track of where we were. Um, here, here we are. Okay. Error. Um, no selected. Error legs. Trends. Forms found. Please select. Um, uh, parallax transform for one of its parents. So, if you don't select any, you will get an end of error message. And then we don't want to work with the objects here anymore, we would want to work with. Parallax transforms here in the end. 
And then we don't have to, to get their parallax transform out of here. Okay. This should actually work. Let's see if this works. And it, it should it should 100% work. <laughs> Select the parent. And 30. Okay, we don't, don't see anything. Because it already had 30. Now we saw something happen. Yeah. I think it's now this one. Can barely see it. Let's put it back to 30. Yeah, now it's, uh, it is this one here at the top. Let's, let me see something again. Then. Yeah, it's all right. Okay, first I had the impression that they are lower, but that's because these zones have a different height. Also, something that we might that we want to edit is then <clears throat> some of the objects that are randomly placed there have a way different size than the other different the other object, and we have to change that. If we are painting the map, we don't want to have. Uh, too many objects that are just completely different in that size because that, that, that makes it a little bit tedious to paint Okay, now let's go on So this one Change the, the, uh, the point difference to 25 20 15 10 Five. And we could also just do it with all of the uh, objects inside of the background, for example, now. So this is easy, much easier to set up. And you see how nicely they, they look now. Now, most of them are empty. Let's just draw. Let's just draw now. And um, let's only, only so, show the center. Yeah? So we don't have uh, objects everywhere. Let's draw. What, what, uh, what is the next layer? Just start anywhere. Uh, let's start with uh, back to front. Bushes. So the next ones will be bushes. So let's select our nice little bush brush. Man, I want, want it to be a little bit darker. Because it's still far in the back. Something that we didn't do with the box, we learn, we are learning, we are learning how to do things. And um, they're fine in, in the back, so let's not scale them to their maximum size. So I have to say, override the sorting layer, sorting layer 1, um, minus, um, then I can just look it up here. Oh, it's minus 40. And now it should work. You see, this bush here is way too big. It's okay if you have some variety inside of this, but I think it's a little bit too much with this bush. I think it's annoyingly, annoyingly big. I really put in a lot of them here. Yeah. Then the next one is trees. Trees, yeah. And they are in all in layer one minus thirty. Don't want to over overbite their color or make them a foreground object. I want them to be a little bit smaller, minus 0 0.6 to minus 0 0.8. Oh, let, let's put it to um, only 0.1 difference, because I, I feel the, the variety between can be a lot like this bush and this bush, bush they're the same, but 
Um, when you have so much variety, it's a little bit weird. And what? Okay, I think I did set up a rotation there. Hmm, when did I do this? <laughs> no, I did not set up a orientation there. So, why are they these trees now? Upside down. Something in, inside of the upside down? No, not really. What? Okay, it's because we strain properties. I don't, don't really get why. No. It's not to make them a little bit darker. Must by like 200. So they're a little bit in, in the back. Right, and then you have just some trees there. And the next thing that we want to do is the next layer. So I'm going to be bushes. It's going to be um, it's minus 20 again, I think. Minus 20, yeah. Okay. Minus 20, and they are um, not yet their total size, but let's say they're close to that. Oh, now they will be in front of every other bush here. So let's just um, put them in sparingly. M. Then next one will be trees. And they will have their full color. They will have their full scale. Let's put them in. So I can't put any any, any tree here. But I think it's because there's a bush already. Not sure. I can't can't put any here. Hmm. It's a bit weird. And the max scale is one. Yeah, like that. And then the next layer is going to be Bushes, and this is going to have sorting order. Zero. So I have to pick the like a brush here, and they're going to have their full scale, the full color, and I'm going to use them sparingly. Yeah, and it's a play. Let's see what happens now that we have um, six layers in the background see how how that looks and it looks way different now yeah i mean you just see that there's so much more of dimension it's kind of nice like this this really now looks like a, like a forest and we are we are we are not even finished so um <clears throat> setting this up in 10 minutes 
working working on setting this up in 10 minutes has uh, been a whole week and it has been two or three weeks just for this moment <laughs> i mean and now we can just put them in here in there in 10 minutes this is why i say i always said let's let's make these functions really easy to use so now you see you have you have them they shift a little bit it just looks nice it just looks so nice to have them there you it just feels like a forest now and we are not even done yet this is so nice And now you, then you come over here and you, you just Im immediately immediately see what kind of difference it, it does it does make just to have all these layers here okay so i'm but i'm getting a little bit ahead of myself there's still still a lot of work to do so yeah this just works it just works it's skyrim <laughs> Now the, the function that I don't really need is, now I can um, set them up and show them all. Oh, something was, was not done correctly. Hmm. Interesting. Look into the inspector here. Oh, they they have not been set up. If I click set set this up, it's not doing anything. Interesting. So let's look into the that function. Why it doesn't do anything? Yeah, it's this functions function. <sighs> and when one of them is named objects it will return ah and if 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 it does does not end with objects what the So they all end with objects. <clears throat> okay, that's correct. Because they will always always be named like this when they are initialized. So I think it's go going to get past this point. And let's still debug lock this. Not initialized.
So it says one of them has not been initialized. What? So we'll say it when the parent is not ending with objects. They're all ending with objects. Hmm. That's weird. I do not return. Do not return. Just break. Check all the others. Now let's see what happens. Simply doesn't set them up. But the parent name ends with objects. No, it does not end with object. And you're going to break a little. Oh, come on. Okay. Let's look up the, the, diff, the um, C sharp break and return. Let's see the difference. Want, want to want this to. to um, go, go through, through the. Um, for each. Okay, I don't want it to break then. Um, so it's going to stop the f whole for each loop. So that's not what I want. So it's when we continue. Let's see what, okay, I, I am actually supposed to know this. I didn't even know continue exists. Now it's saying this five times. Okay, it's saying this five times, but not six, six times. What? But it 
Now initialize the what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It did go on nonetheless. What? So it continue con continue means uh, uh, nothing. Just continue do then. I thought this would, this continue would mean mean it it's going to start with the next um, integer here. It's going to skip this line, and we had five times this this if happening five times, and then then it ex executed all these lines here nonetheless. So that's weird. Hmm. So return is going to to terminate the function. So it's never um, going to be return. Sorry, <clears throat> sorry. Yeah, that's go to. I just don't get it. Get it. First of all, why this is true? And then continue doesn't do anything. What? I mean, it it could be it's just continuing with with the code here, but then why do we need to why continue? It's it's not doing any if it's not doing anything. This is so weird. Oh, I know, I know what's happens. Yeah, okay. The thing is, it's doing exactly as we tell it. It's working. It's working. Now I forgot. I still have some some templates in here in the foregrounds. And this is including inactive. Yay! So let's not include inactive ones because they they, they are a little bit of of um. If you don't have them active, you don't want to work with them yet. Okay, now let's uh, look at this. This looks like a really artistic um, tree count, also because each um, of the of the effects have been uh, doubled. Let's see what what they are actually doing. So on the left, it will now look like this. This is just what it does, and on the right. They will look like this. This is all this is supposed to show us. And um, 
this is for some edge cases where you have um, different different objects and sometimes they, they look just weird when you have shifted them and with six layers that's so many layers that doesn't matter really let's see if it, if we can still play the game without any bug yeah no bug Uh, I think that uh, that's enough for now. Yay! <laughs> now we could add that if I jump up, that the um, assets in the background also move a little bit up and down. And I think. Um, that might be uh, sounding like overkill, but it's really easy to do. So let's go in into this script. Um, you sir, you're completely all white, and give it. A Y shifting speed, but it's going to be private. <clears throat> because this will be set up automatically. I don't want to bother in typing in anything. Just do this automatically. So... With this effect, it's going to shift to the left and right. This is only shifting horizontally. So we have to um, then end this kind of script in here. Uh, we need to also save the camera Y position. <clears throat> and it's going to be the Y position. Start. We need the shift vertically um, function here. It's just a really easy function, that's why I said it's um, not, not that big of a deal to add vertical shift. And this is good, and um, don't really know, just copy this function, <laughs> put it in there and uh, write, write Y instead of X. I'm too lazy right now to understand this my own script, to be honest. Right, and we're going to oh, shif shift on the Y position. And yeah, that's basically everything we want to do. Okay, there's no X in there remaining. Now it should immediately work. Um, now the shift will, will just be too strong and we have to set it up at the start. So what is the Y shifting speed? It's not initialized going to be. Let's just say it's going to be 
half of the X shifting speed. It's a felt value. It's nothing that you can mathematically determine. We have to, to hard code this later. And then at this at the start, we still have to set up the um, the Y position. So there will be a new Y position. Just uh, put in Y every time here and just hope that it worked. Um, it's, a, it, it's the same algorithm, and that's why it uh, hopefully will just work. So let's just let's just play it and see what happens. And then, of course, it's it's not going going to be perfect now. Something something will go wrong, and then we are going to invest more time into looking all the little leaf details. I just want want to try this quick and dirty. Oh, it already works. Now, if you look at this, you see how they are. Uh, how you can see some bushes on the back pop up. And if you pay attention to this bush here, look at it, its position right now. And you, you may, you might have seen that it's moving. And that's great. And the ones in, in the front are not moving too much. I think it's still a little bit too much for the ones in the front. So let's scale this down to 0.4. Um something that that was kind of annoying me was um when I was at this position here and they were not at the height of the player so what are they looking at so here in this new Y position, center game object position, they're looking at their center. Hmm, I don't get it. Center point position. Yeah, they're they are using their reference points parent. So this reference point parent, it has to be at the height of the tile map. Else it won't won't work. So let's change that. So there's there's nothing that has been scripted for this so far. Huh? Can I? Yeah, I might might want to do this a lot, so 
Let's make a function for that. That is only doing... Uh, it's going to do nothing, except it's going to change um, the reference point. So, change reference point. Change reference point. So we need to, to first find our selection here. So where did we do this? Where did we do this? Here. No, this is the wrong one. Here. No, this is the wrong one. Here. This is the right one. Yeah. Let's copy this. And we truly want to do the same thing. We just want to find this um, public reference point and put them to, to that position. So we need to get this, do it at the start. And what, what, what would we want to do is, do we have a reference point? Do we even have this? We need to check this. And then in the end, if we have one, find it and we say set the position to this reference point think it works. Now the only thing here is test this shifting speed. We don't want to change with this function. Hmm. So this can be null. Can we? No, we can. We cannot do this like here. Could could create an overload. I'm not really into that though. We just put in null. No. Hmm. Let's create an overload here. So we need this private um, while function twice, and one will not have a shifting speed. It will not have that, and it will not have that, and it will not shift those here. Oh, God damn it. Yeah, 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 no, no, that's... Okay. We need to reset the, the position of this parallax transform then. Hmm. I 
Let me take a look. The position they do have now. So let's let's take a look inside of them. We have this reference point here. This one. And it's it does only have a, an, 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 an X position. What? White reference points. No, no. Reference points. And this has a world position. Ooh, that's not easy. <laughs> so what, what we have here is the height of these reference points here. See this? The height. We want to, to, to keep the height. We want to set this to the current reference points, but keep the height. And now we have we have to recalculate the Y position. That's the only thing that we need to take care of. After that, it will be really, really easy. <laughs> okay. So this one, last current points, references, correct. Then what is this going to do? Then we set the reference point position to this position, that's also correct. And then, no, we, but we have to, no, we cannot, Put it just to this position. We have to to keep calculate the the, the y position, and that's basically it. Um, y um alt y position shift, and it's going to be and uh, the y position. Yeah. And how do we know how, how much we shifted this? Um, it's going to be minus the um, last reference point. Let's let's do this before before we do anything. Let's record the the old property, of the y position. It's going to make this way easier. What the hell is it doing here? So this will record the old Y position. And then let's not do this. We only need to we only need to Add this to the Y position, and this should be enough. This should be enough to call it the day. <clears throat> Let's see if this works. So it's, this is the old position. I think yes. So let's select this and say change reference point. It's going to uh, new polex speed. What? Okay. And they shouldn't have done anything. Or did I change the reference point? Hmm, it didn't do anything. Hmm. 
Okay, let's undo this. Oh, it did, some, it did do something. It did put... It does put itself higher every time. Yeah. So it's going to be higher and higher. So, um, the code with the Y position is not correct. We need to... We need to... Uh, um, reinvest into that. Also, I don't want to ask any questions if I change the reference point. So, where's this dialogue? Yeah, it's here. Yeah. We don't want to ask any questions. We are serious people. We don't ask questions. We just immediately execute our orders. Just like the compiler has to do. So this is not right. Andros has again invaded the Lilat system. General Pepper has turned to a new star fox team headed by Cornell and free the Lilat system once again. Yeah, because we want to um Go to this reference point position. Let's do this. Okay, let's see if it works. Come on. This will this will be amazing if, if it would work. Okay, let's click change reference point. Okay, let's click it again. Okay, nothing happened. Let's put it... No, let's put the reference point down here. And it did put itself down again. Now, not, I'm not sure if the uh, <laughs> position is correct. I'm a little bit skeptical about that one, to be honest. Uh, I'm not sure. So this is... Is it a parallax transform? No, that's not what I wanted. I wanted to... Um, it's only, only shown the center. Let's change this point distance. It was 30, 40, so it should be 25. Yeah, the the this is the old height. And if I put it down here. Now it seems to keep the height. It probably has been because I changed some things beforehand. Okay, so if I now click on the background, say change reference point, no backgrounds, change reference point. Now they, they put themselves down there. Okay, that's nice. Okay, let's um let's play and see if the paradox shift into the Y position, uh, position is better or not. And yeah, now you can actually see the, the um, layer in the back. Just a little, just a little better. But I don't really feel them shifting up and down when I jump. So let's let's go to to the hard part. I think, like I said, this is a felt value. Let's let this be the same speed as the, as the parallax side speed. Let's, let's see how that would look. Because as I said, the, these are not mathematically correct values anyway. You cannot you cannot um, you cannot um, re really. Um, calculate them correctly. You just have to, to feel them. If I do this, you have a lot more ef more effect here. 
but now if I do this, there's a risk that um, you see it here that if I jumped up and down, the, the layers are a little bit too high. And now the bush will be above above the surface, also this bush here. If I jump up, it's above the surface. So yeah, that's that's kind of better um, in terms of three-dimensionality. It's hard to tell. Hmm. Yeah, so... <clears throat> We could either draw so that um, there's a bush underneath the bush. That's hard to do inside of the scene view. And the fat in the scene view. And we could de decrease the uh, the y shifting speed, but that's also not that nice to do. Ah, so we are having we are having to decide between bad two bad decisions essentially. It's not good. So I want to change the reference point one more time. To be like here yeah, i think this is where the camera would be because it's at the middle of the player change these uh, these reference points okay see how that looks if the problem is still that um and that visible yeah that Turned it down down a little bit. I did turn it down. So now we get this feeling like we're really, really jumping inside of the of a 3D space. Yeah, we still have done haven't done the foregrounds. It's just not for the backgrounds. It's it's pretty pretty safe. There's a, a brush here, this one, which is above the surface. So we have to take care of that. see how we, we did paint this let's see how it looks here and i have no idea so let's disable the backgrounds until we see it come on what the okay i i accidentally changed the order there so i need to to uh, delete those here now I don't know which which one it was. Damn it. Hmm. <laughs> I think it was this one. Or was it? What is on this background layer? Nothing? Seems to be something on it. These are trees. 
I don't see trees on this layer. That's weird. Okay. Maybe I did paint on the wrong layer one time. So this could even be, be better. I didn't paint on the wrong layer. So how could 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 we see what this does? Like I don't want to go into the game and just make this. Oh, this is going to look. Uh, it's going to look like this if you jump up and down. Hmm. Huh. Yeah, I don't have an idea yet. Don't have an idea yet. Might be also this layer. No, it wasn't. What's this layer? Just look at this layer. <clears throat> yeah, we see that every, every bush here, if I jump up and down, I jump up, actually every layer is going to be like that. So the reason why I didn't see them all was because, um, I guess because um, there are some bushes in front of them that did hide, but they are actually above the surface. So how do we fix this? We either make a rule that we have to cover the whole ground, which is not going to happen. I'm against that. Just don't think that that will be very time 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 effective, really time consuming like hell. And the second thing is we could decrease the shifting speed, so this doesn't happen. This will not fix our problem. Also, did I put them in that low? The start. Ah, uh, kind of. Well, this reference point would even be a little bit higher. And what will happen? Enable these. Change the reference point. And let's see what what happens now. And now it's looking a little bit more subtle. Now I don't see any any um, bushes. No, I see the bush here that are above the surface. Hmm. So the thing is, I want I want them to 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 shift with this speed. If I if I put down the speed of the shifting, it's not going going to look much better. It's also like like here in this layer, come down here. See all oh, the shift just adds up. It's just a nice effect to have. So how do we make sure that we never never have problem like here? Here, here. Yeah, we see the the bushes are just above the surface. <clears throat> uh, 
And the tweets also are a little bit above the surface. Like this tweet is now above the is now above the surface. We also can't have that. Hmm. We could put the time map down a little bit. So what happens if I just drag the time map down a little bit? Only the time map. Oh, not this one. This one. And that actually works. Hmm. Not sure if this approach is, is good though. Right, it's it, it sure is. It's not the worst approach. So would this still work if I did put it down here? What? Then it's not rendering anymore? What the hell is that? Seems to be a weird bug. Um. What the hell? I'm changing the Y position and then it's just going to delete itself. What? And if I hit play, what's then going to happen? That doesn't make any sense, to be honest. And now half of it, it's just gone. Uh, maybe, maybe it's underneath the ground. No, it, it's half of it. Half of it is is just gone now. Yeah, like this. What the? Uh, here I can't see it. Okay, so uh, did I change the rotation? Okay, I changed the rotation. Oh, um wrong field so i could put it down here a little bit let's see if it still works as intended to or will it put itself the, uh, to the to the zero position because it's hard coded to do that no it won't so there's an, we don't have to do any code change at least uh, something. Yeah. Just have to play test them a little bit harder. And then they will actually work just just fine. Okay. So that, that's something. Okay, now the next moment, the ten minute ten minute moment is going to be the foregrounds. Or maybe maybe the middle grounds. Hmm. So on the background zero, let's add another. Let, let's first edit the the um, the um, layer that the player is actually work, uh, walking on. Let's create. Can we can we maybe get our object in here or? Prefab? No, I don't think so. Okay, shifting. So, drag this in, inside and initialize this. And this is going to be vegetation um, plus zero. Sorting order one, 
Modern Layer 0. Double leg speed. Oh, do we even want to give this? Yeah, let's give it 5. Okay. And let's initialize, uh, set up the parallax transform. And get wrong. So this is supposed to be vegetation. Let's put the long wash into action. And on setting layer one, lost order is zero. Okay. So there's a lot of fields where I cannot draw on. Oh, Chinkian waited with the six viewers. Hello, thank you for waiting. <laughs> Hi, what's up, people? Chiny Kian. Hello, hello. Hello, hello, you what's up? Dreams. I did it. Sorry, hi. <laughs> Nugget streams. Hi, what's up? So right now I'm working on my time map as you might guess. Look at the stream. Trying to add in a little bit more objects. What you're making? It's a 2D game. And right now I'm working on the time map. And um, trying to make... So this is at the test level, and I just want to to see. Um, I want to to make my my um, procedure so I can make these really really fast later. Because in the in the game later I will have maybe hundreds of these, and I really have to to be careful here. So that while while doing these, I have to be really fast. And you see that now I've done this vegetation, for example, and they're not shifted right. But this this is what I'm I'm trying to set up here, trying to find out what looks good and what does not look good. So here you see that I somehow messed up with their with their speed. Something something did go wrong. <laughs> Chinkian. No, oh, um Chinaikian. Thank you for following. <laughs> Yeah, and I've been working working on this for uh, a whole year, and it's still still not finished yet. And hopefully, if I I stay patient, I can make this work really well. But um, yeah, I've I've to keep grinding right now, um, so that someday this will look really really good. And I think what I did wrong here is I was um, drawing on the wrong time map. This is why the vegetation is looking off. So if I go to this vegetation time map, now it should look much better. Let's take a look. We have to be careful here. This position. Okay, I don't want them to be behind the bushes, so let's override the layer, put them to one. Oh, they should be in the front. Oh, they aren't in the front now. That's weird. Okay, something I will have to look at. So, yeah, this is about sorting out all the weird bugs and quirks that can happen when when you are trying to make a, a game real fast, but you have to be patient at the at the beginning because if if you mess it up at the beginning and you you carry your technical debt, all your mistakes that you did at the beginning, and try to do the same shitty functions all the time, then it's not going to work. And yeah, now you can see the the uh, vegetation here. It's shifting with the player. And if I jump down and uh, up and down, you can see that it's going to shift the player. So when I go the, on this platform, you see that the environment suddenly changes a little bit. Now I'm a little bit in the mountains and see the moon. Now I'm in the forest and yeah, it's pretty much working nice right now. Just want to, now I want to know why is this vegetation here? This one, let's try to, to click it till I found it. 
Yeah, I don't find it right now. I think it's this one. Yeah, why is this not in front of the bush? So the bush has order five. Okay. Yeah. Something that, that I seem to have accidentally messed up. Just happens. Oh, this is so. Uh, this is how they are normally set up. To be 20, 20, 20, and then 25. Okay, let's put this to 21. It will still work. This is this is why it it has been set up like this. Okay, and now I have to get rid of all the little bugs that I still have. No, I don't know any bugs now. Next thing is I'm going to work on the foregrounds. Now you see a lot of things here in the background. And the next thing that you now want to do, of course, is do uh, things in front of the character. And the, with these, you have to be a little bit more careful. You have to um, use your assets sparingly, but you can still do it. And you have, I have these templates. These templates um, make it a little bit easier to um, set set those those layers up. Start with the first foreground. I can initialize it and just give it a name. It's going to be vegetation position uh, zero. Sorting order five. Order in layer. Um, It's going to be zero, I think. And let's put this to zero. Parallax speed none. And this this is just how I, I try to make this really fast. Now I, I just select the bush and start drawing. And th this is how, how it's supposed to work. And if I de detect anything that's not working here, okay, I have to be careful at this position here. If I detect anything that is not working here i will have to to uh, try to change the procedure so in the end now you see there's there's more vegetation i can can hit play but i'm not done yet of course i want also to have some leaves here at the um at the time map just to have some more vegetation so I have this, this fields field with leaves. If I just drag it them here, we'll have a lot of random leaves there. Um so I need to and they're way too big, so I need to scale them down. Okay, I also need to see that they use their original prop, uh, proportions yeah that's much better now these leaves look way too similar so i also have to give them a random offset so you see there's a lot of stuff that just adds up real quickly um put this to randomly between 0 and 0 5 So I want to assign them their layer. And give them a little bit of rotation. Randomly. So let's put in 40 degrees of randomness. See? And now you can see that, that they, they are um, rotated a little bit. The position has been offset randomly. And we, we, we made this that, that, you, that you don't immediately see that this is a grid. Now, if I put put them like in like this, you don't see it immediately. Now you can see it on these positions. So we can maybe add a little bit more randomness. Yo. Yo, what's up? <laughs> Rafki. So let's give them more rotation. Yeah, that's also 
adds up a lot of randomness. And these values here that I just put in here, they are felt, but this the brush that I have here, that is custom made. I had to make the whole script um, by myself um, because yeah, in the in the end, you want to to do um, things that um, you only do in your game, and there there are some brushes from Unity that you can use for inspiration. But in the end, you have to come up with the, with your own uh, scripts for that. Except, except if you buy any, uh, all the assets from the marketplace. So there's a lot of indie developers who just buy all the models, their drawings, their scripts from the marketplace. Of marketplace and then they have their their brushes in here they, they paint with them and then they make a nice game but i'm a programmer and um i'm also just not into buying uh, assets every time i think it's kind of cheap i draw everything by myself all these scripts are by, done by myself and all everything has been done by myself this is a little bit of overkill but it has its benefits so <clears throat> There's more randomness that I, I can add here if I put in more elements into the field. But say some of these should be no game object. And now what will happen is some of the these fields here will be empty. If I go to the grid, you might see this. These fields here will have not spawned any object now so that means it will not spawn in every position so when we do this and if i hit play let's see how it looks And just just add a little bit of randomness we're still not done yet <laughs> as i said this there there will be more in the foreground so now the next thing that is going to be in the foreground it's going to be trees rocks yeah trees and rocks and then we will be we, we, we probably be done so first we want to go and activate this um time up here and initialize it so what would what would be in first? I would say maybe some some kind of leaves here on on the um, the vox would be nice. So initialize this and say um, this is going to be uh, font leaves. they are leaves. Oh, <coughs> leaves. Sorting order one, order layer um, n, and have a speed. What are you programming? Oh, I'm programming my own game. Um, it's a two two D side scroller, and I am, the things that, that I'm programming is yeah, basically everything. <laughs> the last weeks I've spent doing my own editors functions. Um, the fields that, that, that you see right here, they are uh, my own custom scripts in the editor. This is nothing that is provided by Unity that I, I have right here. Um, yeah. This is just trying to make to, to make my work really, really fast. And then I also have all these brushes here. And these brushes here, they are also com completely um, customized. Oh, nice. <laughs> because um, once you start editing here, you can you can do your, def uh, your default brush here. And then you might, might do here your um, own tile set and, and stuff. But um, for example, if you want to pick a ran random tile set out of here, one of these, but randomly, you need a script for that. Now, Unity provides us with a script. But the next thing that I actually wanted to do is 
Now you see all these trees, they're moving with the wind and they are, each of them is a game object. They are not tile sets. So how do I, do I paint a whole game? Let's zoom out like this. How do I paint this whole map as fast as possible? You're not going to, to drag each tree inside of here like this. Put them in there. Of course you could do this. Try to do it randomly and then um, set them up and then you see, oh, I've forgotten something and you um, put uh, three back and then you put three, uh, three in there and yeah, you will have a, a lot of mess if you, if you just try to do this very fast. And if you want to, to have a quality game and I want to have six layers in the background. With six layers in the background, this is going to to, to uh, just um, be a mess if you if you don't um, plan this very very long. And this is what I'm doing right now, just planning how I can do this really fast. And then when, then I want to go through every level. I did these did paint these layers here in the back in ten minutes. That's that's cool. And now I'm trying to find out what looks good, what doesn't look good. So I have this leaves layer, for example. I'm still looking for the tree leaves. I, I think I don't have a brush for that. Yeah, I probably don't have a brush for them. Tree leaves. Ah, okay. So I can't put them in there. Okay. So let's rename this because this is not going to be leaves, leaves then. This is going to be maybe Box, box, box. Okay, let's let's say these are box. And now is the time that where I can still think a little bit later in the game, um, later when making the levels. If I um, think about it for uh, that long, um, yeah, it's not going to work. I start with the with the construct. We is it good or should I move to Unity? I cannot tell you. <laughs> um, I've I've been studying Unity. I've been working in. I've looked into Unreal, but there there's a lot of um, engines like Jodo, uh, um, Construct Three, um, and I think the the big thing why I would not, would not move right now is. Um, I've gotten used to my engine and once you get used to your engine you know all your quirks your tricks and it will get, take a lot of time to move to another engine so don't move to another engine if if you um, are confident in your current engine only I would say only move to another engine if you're not um, satisfied what what your current engine um, provides you because moving to another engine, you're going to to maybe need half of a year until you get good with another engine. That's that's a lot of time. And let's we set the the parallax the speed here. Uh, okay, like this and put it to minus five now you see the uh, these points here they tell me which speed each layer is going to have and you can see <clears throat> these player references what i can do here is if i click my own functions can um, set up my my transforms you see a lot here in the background that's a mess but what is this supposed to tell you if the player is going to to stand on this position I can immediately click just a button and see, okay, if the player is pr uh, on this position, the time map is going to look like this. So this way I know, okay, um, here is not going to be anything, but the player can't see that. And if the player is standing on this position here, the right um, reference point, I can say, I can just click show right parallax transform. And now you can see, okay, if I'm standing at this position, the time map is going to look like this. 
and um, sometimes sometimes um, the problem is when you have a lot of layers they shift into each other and then sometimes um, some something is revealed that you didn't think of that would be revealed like you have a gap in 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 your time uh, in in your layers and everybody is going to see that Rocky. <laughs> Rafkiru, Rafkiru, <laughs> thank you for fol following. So uh, your name is really, really uh, hard to pronounce, but thank you, thank you for following. Um, it is currently on Steam, but I'm thinking about taking it down to be honest, because it's a one-year-old version and it didn't perform at all, and I didn't also didn't also not make any um, advertisement for it because I did not feel confident in in the in the old um, game. And I've been patching the game and trying to make it better. And this is going to be a big patch. And um, in game game development, what I underestimated it is, um, if I want, want, wanted to sell anything, I would probably just have another year just of doing advertisement. And I can't do it while I'm working on the game because making all the scripts by myself, I do everything by myself. I don't have the time to make advertisement. Um, so I need to first finish the game and then go to start just publish a GIF on, on Reddit every day or trying to post this on Facebook and try to spread the news. Hey, here's a game. Go buy it later. <laughs> this is really something that you have to do. And I'm I'm absolutely not, not an, um, a, a selling guy um, who's going in there and trying to give everyone buddy my game. So go out and and buy this um yeah it's i just don't feel comf uh, comfortable about that i have the confidence to sell but um i just feel feel strange about this and then and then again you have to do this basically every day which is also something that um yeah it's just going to take a lot of time so if I do this every day, the game a day, the quality of the game um, will suffer. Uh, it's named Bloody Lane, and you can also find it in the description of this uh, of the stream if you want to to look at it. And they will find an old trailer where the game still looks way different. So now let's put in some rocks here. And let's hit play. Well, they should move a little bit with the camera, but it will look a little bit weird because um, there's not enough layers. And the more layers you add, basically, with parallax effects, is the better it will look. And the the uh, I I didn't didn't did, did, did not enable the center positions. So let's play again. Okay, this is something I have to keep in mind. Okay, now if, if you keep attention to the stones, they do move a little bit. But it's barely, barely noticeable, but that's okay. Or is it? Now with the custom scripts I made, I can easily change this just with the um, window. Mm, let's set the new parallax speed to minus 10. Ah. Hey, to restore override lightning seconds. Okay, that's nothing that has to do with me. That's something of the renderer. Some kind of weird whenever bug to make the art of the game yes um i actually um did also stream how i did the art so um i see the these vods on, on youtube also where you can see me just drawing each of the each of these 
uh, the trees, for example. The trees are hand drawn. The bushes are hand drawn. There's, but there's also some th some retroscoping going going on. So, um, for example, this chest is uh, hand drawn and everything. Um, but the rocks here, they look really well, but they are retroscoped. So I did did um, use a mix of techniques just to to try to get out as many assets as possible. So now I'm moving here and I just wish that, that the rocks in, in the foreground, I wish th that there would be more. So let's create the next one. Did you make it with Photoshop? Yes. <laughs> Actually, actually, I'm I'm more of a fan of GIMP if I could use it, but I'm used to Photoshop and yeah. Once once you're used to a program, just as I said, um, it takes a lot of time to to move the to the next pro uh, program. Now uh, um, I like the from from um, GIMP that it's open source. Mister Scythe, thank you for following. <laughs> So I really like like that GIMP is open source, and um, yeah, it's basically free. And Photoshop, it's basically the same program since ten years, and you still have to pay for that. For them changing, not anything at all, just providing you with something, some some kind of cloud service that you have to pay for. Um, that's why I really think GIMP is is a little bit better in just the terms. But I'm used to Photoshop, and once you are used to a program, yeah, you, you keep using it. So, now I want to initialize this time map here. This will also be rocks in position 0. Sorting order 5 for the foreground, and order um, 15. So they will be in front. And parallax speed minus 20, I guess. And you can immediately see here, these points here tell you now um, there's another object, time map here. And you can see um, this dot, everything above this has positive speed, everything underneath it has negative speed. Because it's relative to the layer that you are standing on, you're going to have positive or negative speed. Something that really you just need to figure out for uh, by yourself for some time. Um, just by experimenting a lot. And now we can put in a min and maximum scale. Let's constrain this to X. Um, and say this is supposed to be all in layer 50. Okay. Let's see if we can now just draw them in real quick. Yeah. And now I could could, uh, could uh, just test this. And yeah, let's just test it if, if it if it looks all right. But then I want to keep going. So let's do a real quick and dirty test. Yeah, and you me immediately see that with the additional layer here, okay, now we have a hole here. Uh, so we we would need to fix that. But it's, aside from that, it's immediately going to see uh, to look better. It's also also shifting with the camera if I um, move up and down. And it just adds. So you just add more and more layers and it's just looking better and better. And later, when I go, go this, this is still testing. Later if I do this in the game, I will have to do all the layers at one time and I will not, not even look at them. That's, that, is, that is my goal right here, to later not have to look at, the, at all of the, the stones and everything. Because it's just going to take a lot of time. Okay, now let's get on to the next layer. And this one is going to be 
the first trees that we have here. Mm. Call these trees. Um, Osseo, yeah, uh, it's trees. Sorting a lay uh, order five. Order in layer. Um, let's put this to. What is this? 20. Parallax speed 25. And now I want them to be in the foreground and I want to, them to be really, really big, big. Um, oh, but um, I'm still in the rocks brush. I have to set the tree foreground brush and say they should be between two, five. I think they have to be three, three or four scale big. Let's see if, the, if this works. No, I still have to override the sorting layer which is sorting layer 5 and I can immediately see this inside of this information here. It's order in layer 20. Okay. So this will be in the front. Put them in here. I have to, to do them sparingly because yeah, you now see that they are in front of the character. Now if you say, oh no, if they're in front of the camera, uh, the character, you're not going to see anything. But actually I've set this up already. So you, you can see the character through the tr through the tree, just a little bit. Something's out here. Now, with this, of course, you will have to do this sparingly, because if you you put something in front of the character, the user will say, um, fuck you, I hate, I, I'm not going to play this. Um, so I will I will put these trees only be in, in instance, only in instances, there's not a lot of things going on, so you can still play the game without having anything in front of her character. Because fighting, fighting with the trees um, in front of the character is going to be really, really difficult. I'm not gonna lie there. So, let's go on here. Set up the next, the next two layers. This is going to be bushes, I guess. Okay, I'm, uh, I should maybe change this position part to be its own text. Sorting order 5, order in layer um, 25, parallax speed 30. And the next one is going to be um, the last trees. Or maybe this will only be one or two trees. Order in layer um, 30, I guess. Parallax speed 30. Okay.
Oh, I did, did set, set them up to have the, the wrong speed. Oh, that's bad. Yeah, these... Let's set this speed to be... Um, minus? Um, I've forgotten where I am. That's something. Maybe I would like to write this into the time map just to read it. Um... Because I don't want to open this, look into the script every time. So... I would like to, to add the Q in speed or something. So, let's put this to minus 30. This one... Minus 35. This one... Oh, this one is going to be here. So this one will be minus 35. The other one will be minus 40 speed. This is basically the speed that is it is going to move um, with the camera. And you can you can see the speeds just in this in this kind of point graph, which is a little bit like um it's it's a little bit artistic to be to be honest. Just to see how many how many points you have there. And let's go on. And the next one will be bushes. Yeah. Oh, I hit quite the wrong sorting order here. This is five. Okay, now bushes, 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 bushes. Yeah, I want to make them real big. Between two and two dot five big. And I want them to be in the front, lowest order in layer, um, what's, uh, 25. Okay, and let's start drawing. Oof, that's big. It's kind of bigger than I thought it would be. And I also have to, yeah, I also have to do something about the, the very huge brushes. Um, I have to scale down the prefab. So, because it's annoying me a little bit how, how big this thing is. Mm, okay, I don't think it looks good if there's um, colored brushes in front of dark trees. So, let's override the color. And say, I want them to be in color 100, 100, 100. So, they're supposed to be really dark. Or maybe even darker. 50, 50, 50. So one fifth of their original um, whiteness. This big bush is really annoying me. Not look, looking bad, but it, it's um, a little bit annoying to, to put it in with the other bushes, which has, have just very different scales. So, okay, let's, let's not test. Let's just draw the last layer, which is going to be the three foregrounds. Is your game free? Um, no. <laughs> no, it's not free. Now, I, I, I will give, um, some, some, give out some, some uh, keys at some point, but right now it's not free. So, all in layer 30. So, yeah, this is a single player 2D game. And I, w I wouldn't, I wouldn't know how to, to make money with this. Um, if it's free, I don't want to do advertisement um, inside of the game. It's just not, yeah, I just don't like, li uh, like thinking about that. Yeah, maybe have these two trees here. And let's hit let's hit play. Oh, if you if you do any any game for free, 
you either um, don't put in too much work because you have to live on something um, or you have to, to, to put in some some stuff that is going to to make money like skins like advertisement like clickable things that are going to distract the user like buy coins buy buy my stuff here and i, I really don't like the idea to be honest okay now with the, all these layers we have we have a um, nice little forest here now this forest is really cramped so i will put in the the because mainly because of the um trees in the foreground so the trees in the foreground here the dark ones um yeah i really have to to be very careful with them because i can only um use them sparingly it's besides from that yeah it's looking quite okay all right i think Oh, I have to make sure that the fireflies are not in front of the trees here. So that's something that I didn't see. And while doing this, you just have to, to keep your mind really, really uh, clear. So, I think in most of the cases, it's going to, to look much better without these trees. Let's tr test this out without the trees in, in, in the foreground. So, I think the, the trees in the foreground are nice, but I'm maybe only going to use them in one or two um, instances in the game. Because normally, if you play like this, there's enough stuff going on. You don't need, need to... Put more stuff in, into the foreground just to distract the player. I could also try to to increase the height of the um, assets in the front, but that's basically about it. So mostly this will just be trees, rocks, trees, rocks, and then trees, bushes, trees, bushes, and have this vegetation. This vegetation may be um, on the tile map. Okay, so... I guess we, we, we have proven that, that it works. Now I have to determine, is it good though? I think, yeah, with the trees, no. Trees are way, way too much overkill, it's especially this tree here. Let's try to delete that. Delete the tree. I can't find where it is. So how did I set up the the uh, the eraser so it picks more fields like this? No. Hmm. Okay, just randomly found the tree. There was a way. So let's play this with one less tree. So with the trees right now, mm, I think if you go inside of this forest, then there's too much color. So you, I would have to, to to tone down the the colors in the backgrounds and the foregrounds a little bit more because it looks a little bit weird that the that the stones right here they have the full color and the others don't. So so even though with all the tools I have here, I still have to be very very careful. Because then, then I will have to set up these, these colors and maybe change change them on the fly. I'm Fennec. Hi. Hi, Fennec. What's up? Nice to see you.
Okay, let's get let's get going. And I will, will make a call here. I will now make this whole position here look good in 10 minutes. Let's try this. With the with the whole with the uh, same procedure that I did before. Let's try to do this. 10 minutes. Let's lock this so I always have these shifting assets in here. Also, we name the foregrounds. And when I say go, I will go. And try to, to make the same effects that I had before, just on the next layer. And speed is of the es essence. So, okay. One, two, three, four, go. Let's try to be real quick here. And first layer in the background is rocks. Sorting all our one. Uh, this is minus 50. And it has par parallax speed. Um, we just give it minus 50. Uh, minus 30. Okay, let's decrease it by 5 every time. Next one. Oh, this, this is rocks position 1. God damn it. First mistake. Okay, next one. Um, This is after the rocks. I want to have bushes 3. Bushes 3. So. Bushes plus one. Sorting on her. Um, all in layer minus 40. Alex beat 25. Next one. And a slice and Uh, this is going to be trees, bushes, trees, bushes, trees, yes. Trees, position zero, okay. Uh, position one. And this is going to be minus 30. Oh, I have to hurry up if I want to, to do this in time. Bushes. Position one, one, <clears throat> um, minus twenty, fifteen, and the next one is going to be twist again. Twist plus one. We need to to ask the position um, in a different kind of input field. Minus 10, 0. Oh no. Yeah, I need to change the speed. One speed, um, 10. Okay, next one. Initialize it, and the last one is going to be bushes, uh, bushes at position one. Sorting order one, order is zero, parallax speed five. Okay, here we go. Um, let's also set up the four the the foregrounds immediately. Um, so the next one. So need the vegetation position one. Um, no speed. Oh no, maybe I want to give this speed five. Oh, I've I've forgotten to change the reference point. Oh, this is going to cost me some time. 
So I want this reference point to be here. Okay. Like here. I have to find all those at position one. Hmm, can I maybe cross one? Select them like this. Then change reference point. Okay, now I did change the reference points. But it seems like I got one foreground uh, asset. This one. Okay, it looks like I gave it minus speed, so let's change the the speed here. Um, I think this should be 30. Yeah, okay, so this had the wrong speed. I can immediately see the, the error here, that's that's nice. So I immediately saw what, what, uh, what was going wrong, so not too bad. Now go, for, go with the foregrounds. Initializing the foregrounds is still very tedious, I have to say. Um, so here I don't want to have another tree here. Just want to have rocks and bushes. Rocks, rocks position one, sorting order one, order in layer uh, thirty. Oh, it's it's also my parallax speed minus thirty. Also that I did make a mistake. This is. Uh, sorting order 5. Hmm. So maybe I should save this in, into a variable because if I do this a lot, I will forget this a lot. So there's a lot of quirks that I still have to take care of. I'm losing, I'm losing time here. So let's go on. Bushes. Position 1. 5. Um... 25 Rolex speed minus 25 Next one It's going to be rocks again This set rocks, bushes, rocks, bushes Setting our 5 Or in layer um, I don't know, I don't know, 20 um, Minus um, Minus, 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 minus 20. Yeah. Okay. Next one. So, yeah, it's, it's still a little bit of annoying. Just set up all of these timers, to be honest. So, tire. Me, I should not give, give each of them a name because num putting in numbers is just faster. So, Last one was Vox Bushes. Signal five. All in layer. Um, fifteen. Alex speed minus fifteen. And put in one here. Name is uh, as one was bushes, so this is Vox. Vox passes position one, sorting order five, ten. Level X speed is also going to be ten. And the last one. This is going to be vegetation in position one. Um, setting order five. Order and layer. Uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, um, 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 zero. Five. Five. Parallax speed. Zero. Okay. 
So now I've set up all of these time apps. Okay, let's go and draw on them. Now the drawing part seems to be the fastest part, but you immediately see there's this is going to be a, lo a lot of mess here. Not going to lie. Okay, sorting order five. Oh, let's start with the first one. Veg vegetation position one. Sorting order five. Order in layer five. Okay, so first one. Order in layer five. Good. Um, it's going to have their, their normal scale. Oh no, I also need to do pick up with vegetation here yeah vegetation for for um, this layer okay and start drawing Okay, so the next thing is going to, I want to put also the leaves in here. Like I set it up. Yeah, now I have the leaves here. And the next one is going to be rocks. Or in layer 10. Okay, let's do this fast. Faded brush or in layer 10 and scale them to 1 1. Normal scale. Um, maybe make them a little bit darker. It's like 200, 200, 200. That's it. Next layer. Bushes. Okay. It's going to be bushes. Um, sorting order 5. Order layer 15. No. I don't know. I don't feel so good. Oof, they are way too big. Um, let's put down the scale. Put it down even further. Okay, maybe I, I overdid a little bit, but let's go on. Next box, box, um, give it 100. Sorting it at 5, order layer 20, order layer 20. Oh no, this is st still washes. Uh, where are the box? There. 20, 100, 100. 100. And keep drawing, keep drawing. Them to be a little bit bigger. Okay, they are not in front. Why are they not in front? Okay, let's increase their order layer. Okay, now they are in front. Okay. 
Cover all the gaps inside. Okay. Go to the next one. Bushes. <clears throat> also in in front. Oh, I think we 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 are not steep enough. We can fix this real quick at least. So what do I mean? They are not steep enough. Um we need to, to put the the these um time is a little bit higher. Because cu currently um the um lowest ones would be barely visible to the player. And that's that's not good. So let's make them steeper. Okay, and then more bushes. 25. Bushes. 25. Going to be very dark. And I think I might not have overridden the color of the of the stones. So <clears throat> I think later I will have to make a tool. If I if I did not set up the color to change the color real quick. quick. Okay, so let's try 27. Yeah. Okay, now the next one, last walks in the front, and I'm, I haven't done them in 10 minutes, I'm out of time, maybe, just maybe I can try to be a little bit more efficient here, let's make these dark, real dark, and what is happening, don't, I don't draw anything, why? Oh, I've put their alpha value to zero. Oopsie. So you're probably not going to see them inside of the game. Still want to make sure there's always a layer underneath the, the layer that you are standing on. Okay, now it will be really hard to find any gaps inside of this. Okay, let's go go further with the background. Okay. Oh no, that now then there we have vegetation setting order level one, all in layer zero. Okay, setting layer one, all in layer zero. Okay, let's do this. <clears throat> and go on, go on, go on, go on. When it reaches the next one. Oh, I also want to put in some sticks here. It's just randomly put in some sticks. Because why? Because we have them. On their way too big though. Uh zero dot um two two zero three scale. Now I can just lay some some sticks on the ground. Doesn't make any sense though. <laughs> okay, so what's the next one? Um, vegetation, bushes, bushes. Okay, next one is going to be bushes. And I say th these are the last last layers that I do. After that, I will go and get something to eat real quick because I'm a little bit hungry and I want to, to do this real fast. Let's try to to just try how. How fast can we get this inside? And this is, this is um, order in layer zero. Okay. Let's 
Let's also decrease their size again. Because we're going back. It would be a little bit nicer if we could do this automatically. But I don't have an algorithm for that right now. Okay. Next one. Trees. Oh, we, get, we get some trees in online layer minus 10. Okay. Tree brush. Sorting layer 1, modern layer minus 10. Okay, just keep their scale. Yeah, there's not going to be a lot of trees here. Then bushes. Next bushes. Okay, let's give them a color. Let's decrease the the, um, the color here. Order layer minus twenty. Oh, they are there. You you barely see them though. Okay, now we see that they are, uh, they are a little bit too many. Let's decrease the the um, amount of bushes, and I still say, yeah, we we have to take care of this big bush. It's it's way too big. We have to scale it down. Okay. Um. Next one. Trees. It's trees. Trees, trees, trees. This one. Okay. Um, and these are modern layer minus 30. And let's assign them a color. Make them also a little bit darker. So the more layers we have in the back, the darker they will be. I think that's sufficient. Then only two layers left. Come on, we can do this. This is minus 40. And down with the scale. Here we go. And those one will be really, really dark. We don't see them yet. That's okay. Okay, and the next one, the last one, it's going to be rocks. They're going to rock. Hopefully. <laughs> so they are brown rocks. And let's just put them in there. Order sorting layer one. Lowest order is going to be 50. Avoid the colors. They're going to be really dark rocks. Oh no, they, they have to they have to be bright rocks. Because the background is, is bright. So you can't overdo it here. And yeah, yeah, I'm probably not going to see them. So this is something that I maybe have to test out um, just find it out with experience. How much do you have to draw in and um, maybe it's a little bit too much work if you are probably not going to see 10% of it. When when you see 20% of, of them, yeah, that's, that's okay, I think. Now you go through this layer here. And we've also done this layer here. If, if you look at the ground here, it's looking a little bit better than the other ground. Because we just have more layers. So you... What, what I else could do maybe... Could maybe only use one layer for, for the lowest part of the level. 
it would maybe also be nice because making that many layers for the whole level you go on here and this hike is is is, is the same hike as before now for this one these positions here i would need in a new layer again so even even though i did a lot of work to make this really fast there's still a lot of things that that i have to consider just to make this very time efficient Okay, I, that maybe was a little bit embarrassing as a dead <laughs> death, but you get the idea. Okay, as I said, I tried to make this as fast as possible. I tried, let's make this in 10 minutes. It took 25 minutes, so that's still not uh, okay. It needs to be a little bit faster how I make these layers. Now, a little bit will uh, come with experience, but... Um, yeah, I might might have to to think how um, how I speed up this process because um, I think the quality is fine. Um, I might might get more um, get better with drawing. Um, also, have to decrease the the amount of brushes that that I put in there. But I may might, might want to think about how do I speed up this process even more because there's a lot of just clicking clicking on tile maps and trying to um change their order and this is something that might be done automatically better so what what could we, could we do to fix this here in this template we could store information like the sorting or order that that this is supposed to have and if you store the c in here I can then just put it um, automatically inside of these fields here. Since since these are custom made tools, I know every field of them and can just put them in there. So um, I don't have to go in here every time and just type in a number that I have to read out of this field, uh, uh, out of this list here. Because let's be real, with 10 layers in the foreground and ten, uh, five, six layers in the foreground, and six layers in the background, you're going to end up with 12 layers every time you do this. So over here, over here, over here. So 12, 24, 36, um, 48, 60. And this is going, going to, to be a lot of um, confusion and a lot of chaos very, very fast. So yeah. Um, so in the end, I just want to click on this and then select the correct brush here and be be done. Yeah, maybe I won't want even this to 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 have the information for the correct brush, so I don't have to select it. And if I want to select another brush here, maybe you should do this automatically. Just all these little steps that can be improved make the, the making this process in um, less time possible. Okay, so this was a nice, nice uh, first test. I think we're getting there. I think we're getting there. We still have to to make the whole level here, which is just the test level, look look good. And um, so that we we still will, will continue drawing in this level after I make a break now, and um, it will be like this. I will try to make this process even more efficient. So we can draw them really in 10 minutes. This is the goal. Make one of these in 10 minutes. And as if, if I need 25 um, minutes for uh, such a small space. Yeah, that's not go that's going to be very, very tedious and annoying. And I don't think that that we can make the game in time then if we don't speed up this process as much as we can. So. As I said, I will do a break now and hopefully you will have enjoyed the stream so far. And for everybody who stays, most likely a lot of people will leave the stream um, when I do a break. Thank you for joining in and see you later.
Oh, <clears throat> so I've been eating well and got myself a nice little, um, yeah, I don't even know, champignons um, and as of some fung fungi, uh, pepperoni, olives, cheese, uh, some vegan flesh. Uh, yeah, <laughs> just had to, to eat something. Okay, but now let's go on and try to speed up the process so that we have a really, really nice setup here. So I've been thinking while eating and I don't immediately know how we can speed it up, like selecting this time up here and then selecting, selecting the, the brush immediately. Um, that would be a little bit uh, overkill. I, I don't know how to do it. Um, you would ha have to write some kind of uh, event trigger. that triggers if you select this time map, but I don't know how to do that. Now, I th it's definitely possible, but this is going to take time. The other thing that is going to be much faster is, what if he, you, you saw me in, in the beginning, I had to dra drag in big, um, one of these shifting time maps. Go and search for this. This one. I had to drag it in, in here every time and then name them. I think this is where, where we can speed up this process. Because this is also the most annoying part for me, to be honest. So what do we want to do instead is just to draw, drag in this and then have a function here that asks us how many layers do you, uh, how do we want to um, name the parent, the main parent, foregrounds uh, for example. And then <clears throat> just want it to um, ask us um, how many layers? So, for example, six, six layers, and the first, um, the first order and layer, the last order and layer, the first speed, the last speed, shifting speed. So, uh, with this, we could easily set it up to um, automatically um, make all of these these um, foregrounds, and then put. Just put put the information inside of these tile names, and then they will be they they will not be named bushes though, like here. But that's it will be ju the name just tile map position position one, um order this. Maybe let's also skip the post part because if we put them into one object parent object that has that that is going to show us which position they are in. And the, we, then we only um, enable those layers which have the um, foregrounds and backgrounds that, that we want to work with. Okay. That's um, quite some work that we have to put in. And let's not be lazy. Let's get going. It's definitely possible. So let's make this new function. And it's going to be named set up lots of transforms. Uh, time map group. Time map group. Yeah, I think that's that's good descriptive name. And um, we need to have a parallax to transform selected. So let's find select. And there it is. 
go back to our custom function that they are going to code here. This one, this will be our beautiful um, new function. So. We need to search this. Game object uh, selected objects. This is going to be equal to selection game objects. And then we want to see if there is a parallax for each. Selected objects in here, and we won't want to just save here parallax transform, um, parallax, uh, parallax template. <clears throat> and if, um, Selected object dot get component uh, parallax transform is there is not null then set this parallax template to be on the selected one so we first get the get the template and if we don't get any want to display an error. We want to uh, play it. Our, our message. Yeah, that actually is is uh, correct. Um, we don't even need to change the message. That's great. Okay, now we, we found a Pelex transform as a template. Now we want to ask some questions. Like in this one. So. Uh, where was I? Here. Okay. So the title. Uh, we don't know the title yet. Give this. So what, what do we want as an in information? We want the parent name. We want the um, <clears throat> we want the sorting order is right. We want to know how many layers amount of layers yeah, and then put that in um, we want the start Sorting order. Okay, and we want the end sorting layer or order. And no, <laughs> no, 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 no. That's what we want to do with the order and layer, not with the uh, sorting order. Uh, 
Ja, danke. <lacht> okay. Order in layer. Going to be start order in layer and end order in layer. Okay. And this is the same we want to do with the shifting speed. Start X shifting speed and end X shifting speed. We want to replace commas with dots in, inside of this float field. We want to give it title. Um, let's just put in some random, some random string there. Yeah. Multiple pass construct multiple yes. Okay, if any any of these here are null, your name, amount of layers, sorting order, any of those are null. Oh, I think we can we can write this better with the question marker. It was something that I did look up yesterday. Any of these are are null. Um, we cannot. We we can just uh, say yeah. No name in now allowed to be null. And we are not, not asking for a name. We want to make this really, really fast. Okay. So we need to make some sacrifices to the algorithm gods. Ah, it's... <clears throat> it doesn't matter. So, per name. Parent name. Um, input name. Background. We we uh, have was have something inside of here. Amount of layers one. Sorting hour one. Start order. Uh, is mostly going to be zero. End order would be, for example minus 50 and then also have shift <clears throat> oh, the background is shifting in the right direction so that that, that would make it much faster to set up now we asked all these questions. Yeah, and so we have we, we now have our input values. Um, some of these are actual integers, so we have to pass them. Oh. It's just Check for that one and and how do you pass integers? It's integer. Oh, integer. Int pass in integer int. Us. Hmm. 
need to con convert the the string to an integer because um you you get a, a text but we need need to convert it to a number also do this with the shifting speed let's call these input So we're sure that these are the input values and then we want to have um, shifting speed past them is going to be the input no load pass do the same with the um, end shifting speed okay now we have set up all our um in our values but we need to set up the the layout and everything that we want now want to do is pretty much what what we uh, did before we just want to do it in a, in in another order so Four. We want want to for every um, layer that has been um, find. So we want to make a loop here. This is going to loop as many times as we have layers. <clears throat> So every time then we want to um, instantiate um, a game object which has the Parallax template yeah. and save this into a game object. Time map. Hmm. Okay. There's still nothing special here. <clears throat> Except that we need to record this. So undo this is something that is really annoying when trying to make make this that we can uh, control Z it. Okay, so we have to do this here. Let's record that we did something. So we can um, undo it. And the name of this will be... Um, Name of the function. So we create now a template. First, we also want to create a Parent. 
So, game object parent is going to be a new game object. Yay, and we want to call it um we want to instantiate it with the, its parent name. Yay. So, before we start uh, putting on all these orders here, um, what do we want to do is maybe put all those all to zero. Ah. And we, we, we basically did everything we want. Except we now want um, since this time up, they want it to have a name. It's going to be time up plus plus some stuff. What do we want in there? The sorting order. I was also also a name set up for let's copy the the um syntax go back here put that inside It has, has to be in here. Okay, time of name and the the all all things here. Okay, it's going to be time up. Yay! Time up. Sorting order plus sorting order, and then the order in layer. We don't have to calculate it, it yet. Load. Order in layer is going to be so we are, we are starting with the start order times okay the, the second part is I times uh I don't know um, 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 uh, 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 of course I don't know. start order layer no and end layer divided by start uh, is it correct uh, uh, I hope so <clears throat> no it's not correct because now it will always be zero if we say start order is one so it's we plus this so <clears throat> if you say start order zero we will start with zero then end order end order in layer divided by start order in layer um say minus 50 divided by zero oh that's not good um <laughs> Uh, 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 divided by zero, it's going to be uh, yeah an error. We can also not divide zero by minus fifty, uh, so it's not a division. And order in layer. No, it, it's going to be the difference between those two. The difference between those two. And 
divided by the amount of layers. So let's say we have <clears throat> five layers, six layers. Let's say we have six layers. Um, the end our order layer would be minus 50 here. 50 divided by six uh, would be, no, it would be amount of layers minus one. Ooh, but that could easily be null. Ah. Um, okay, um, 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 we cannot divide by zero. Ever. So let's let's think. We want to, to avoid that we divide by zero. So... I don't know <laughs> um, how, how to get rid of this. Um, so we would never divide by zero, but... We need to... To say amount of layers minus one. Uh, because... Um, <clears throat> If we divide 50 um, by 6, we're going to have, um, I don't know what, but what we actually want to do with the 6 layer is to have 0, minus 10, minus 20, minus 30, minus um, 40, minus 50, with 6 layers. <coughs> so we need to have minus 50 divided by... Uh, uh, five, yeah, five. Is it also working with 25 though? Let's see, zero. And then 25 uh, divided by fi uh, five is going to be five. And then order would be zero. Boom, yeah, yeah, okay. So because of, of the amount of layers, minus one, could be um could be zero let's put in a new float that says oh we we, should, we can just check if the amount of layers is zero if amount of layers so if we were all, only want to set up one layer um is equal to or equal small smaller or equal zero no one <laughs> if, if amount of layer layers minus one is zero and yeah, that, that's what we want to check yeah then let's let's say we want to define this float here and normally we want to just initialize it like normally without any hiccups and if the amount of layers is just zero then the order in layer is going to be the start order in layer 
So I used to check the end order layer with just one layer. It just doesn't make any sense. Okay. Next one. We have the sorting order. We have the amount of layers. So, can we do the sorting order and order and layer here? Good. Then, we do basically the, the same thing with the shift, shift, uh, shifting speed. <coughs> <coughs> so, the float, shifting speed. X. Shifting speed. And it's going to be like Sonic. It's going to be fast. And we're going to do the same thing. Just with the shifting speed. But put in other parameters. Good. Okay, we have filtered out all of our, our information here. Now we just need to to uh, set up the speed. I think then and then it's done. Possibly. So we already have the next method here. Now we have to check for the um, point reference. Yeah, and that might be um, interesting. So we need this point reference here. Oh, I didn't, didn't um, s try to find it though. So, so I need to, to have this line here. Okay, and now we have set up basically everything. We just have to say, okay, put this parent, please, um, into the grid group. So, parent dot transform event is going to be um, game object dot find and let's maybe, maybe see where we did use did use this Wasn't there one time where we did try to find the grid? Hey, there it is. Okay. Oh yeah, we have to do this with the uh, set parent. Whoopsie. Okay. <clears throat> Let's go on. We parented this. And the time up is the time it is always going to be the child of the parent. Ah, okay. It says, so it tells us, hey, do it when when you initialize the the um, instantiate the actual game object. Yeah, we can do this. This is fine. Okay, now we have rented it, and and the next thing is 
what we want to do is just the same things that, that we um, did every time else. So we want to go into the initialize and just copy the US here to find find where, where we want to go in. I think it's after this here. Here. Yeah, I want to copy this here. And first we want to put it in here. And the parallax transform is going to be the um, file map it component parallax transform. Okay, that fix fix a lot of errors. Let's go. Let's go through this. <clears throat> going to create a copy. Then it creates another parent. <sighs> I don't know what it does. <laughs> then, then it's parenting a lot, uh, a lot. Okay, it's, it's um, setting up the structure and it makes a new parent just for the time map and the um, copy of it and puts them in there. That's okay. And it sets up its name. We don't need this. Except for here. So let's put the name into a new variable, save it up for later, and it's, it's going to be reused here. And then we just do the, the, basically the same as we always do, we'll set the reference points, and then it, it's going to work. Oof, 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 oof. <clears throat> this is um, yeah I I don't know it's way better what we do now than setting this up in 25 minutes 25 minutes for one piece of um time map is just way too long we, we we took way too long for this and let's set up a time map group oh yeah we need to select this template here
Set up time up. Ooh, PA. Okay. So, per name, yeah, it's background, amount of layers. Let's make six layers. Sorting our order uh, one. Order in layer. Sorting order. Ah, okay. We need to change that description. And it basically did what we wanted to. Now we have all these time maps in here. We I don't need to to uh, do anything. Can set them up. And now I can can easily just enable disable them with one click. That's kind of nice. And I'm really surprised that it's working on the first try. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm a little bit sick, and this is, makes me a little bit too sleepy. Maybe I should choose and um, take a nap. That's uh, going to be a power nap then. I'm just a little bit, um, yeah, I'm, I just felt a little bit ill since Thursday and uh, basically working with kids and they, they, um, when you're working with kids, you are going to get all the bacteria nonetheless, can't, can't do anything about it. And I often get sick because I'm working with, with children a lot. Well, yeah, then they are spreading, uh, spreading all their sicknesses. I'm pretty um pretty happy that I did not get um corona though because we even had had uh, children that had corona afterwards um luckily um nothing has been spread in in the group so I basically give I basically have a sports group and um yeah, we, we just trained uh, kids in parkour and I'm I'm a trainer for twelve years now, twelve or thirteen, for fourteen years I'm I'm for fourteen years I'm a trainer right now for these groups, and yeah, it's a lot of fun to be honest. Sometimes sometimes they they give you some some kind of sicknesses, so yeah, I'm all always trained in staying alive. Okay, now we have to say start order, end order, minimum parallax speed, max. Oh, let's also call this start. Yes. Can go both ways. Because it, it can go from 0 to minus 50 or 0 to 30. It doesn't have to be minimum, maximum. Because that, that would bite itself at minimum maximum. And what else could we change? I'm pretty... I, I, I pretty don't know. Pretty much don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty much out of, out of things that we could optimize here. The only thing that uh, would be, that you maybe would like to change is um, also the the order and layer has been set up correctly here. And that you want, might would want to change is the time map, map name, but um, yeah. <clears throat> maybe if I wanted to work on these time maps now, I would like to have a function. It's going to allow me only to see the the um, time maps that I'm working on and disable all the other ones because I don't want to see them. Um, as I said, we will have a lot of time maps here. And you, you actually see how many time maps are in here. Ah, oh, we, we still have one error. And that is the name in here. Is 
seems to be wrong. The name of the time I've been here is wrong. So the, this name should be the same as this one. Ah, because we never did set it up. I thought we did, we did but we didn't. Kind of weird though, because I don't see us uh, editing this time map name except for this part where we um, edit the original. Hmm. But we don't don't edit the copy. That's a problem. That's a problem. Yeah. <clears throat> so we don't want to name this. We want to name the time map event. No, the time map copy. Yep. <clears throat> so if we we found found something. So now we, we know that um, everything did go according to plan. Oh, in the end, um, I want to delete the selected tile map. So I could, I could maybe change this. Uh, do this. If selection on or objects count is not one, then let's not do anything because I, I I don't want to to accidentally select too many too many um, objects and then accidentally destroy the the wrong object there, possibly destroying some work there. So, um, please only select one. Um, game object and hierarchy. Okay, now. Um, okay, so there's still something that we can optimize with this. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> I hope not. Okay, let's. Oh, yeah, we, we could maybe, maybe make it so that. That the Q and parent is the parent that we use, not not the grid. So yes, grid. Um. Parent, select parent. Um, okay. So now it should pay, put its side, uh, put itself into the structure right here instead of um, just somewhere inside of the grid. <clears throat>
Okay, let's try this out. Uh, Paranam, yeah, background, amount of layers, um, six. Uh, starting order, one. Start order, yeah. Yes, start parallel speed and parallel speed. Okay, there was one error. Oh, there, there are a lot of errors in here. Um, Joel, I all just have to do with lightning. Is, it, is there something useful in here or just lightning? Hmm. Okay, but it did not destroy this template. They do have the, the, the correct names though. <clears throat> but it should have destroyed this template. Oh, it, it destroyed the the, the um, parallax. Okay. If I reverse. Okay, we need need to record this. Why before I record? Next try. Break this in here. This is background. Just enter, 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 enter. And it's gone. Control one's position in group with only one control when doing repaint aborting. What the? No. I think the, what's happening here is. Ooh. Really put them in there. That's the wrong layer. Um, what happened here is... It's a little bit hard to understand. Um, I think what happened is... I deleted the object that I had selected. And then it doesn't know what to select after. So let's put into the selection. Objects. See, how do, did I put something in here before? Okay. Let's copy this. Saving me one second there. That's really important. And um, now I want mm. this to be parent. Can there still listen? Oh, or oh, return false? Yeah. Seems like I copied there something that doesn't belong in there. 
Okay, let's go and try to do this again and again and again and again. Get rid of all the errors. People are building something outside. Hearing, hearing their noises. Like tools and everything. Didn't want to post play actually. Um, let's try to do this again. Shifting. Assets. Okay, put them in here. Select them. And make this into a timer group. And there we go. But why don't we see them here? I know why. This is again. I also have to record that, that I destroyed an object here. Okay, do this again. But this time, I'm going to say six layers, please. Yeah, and then, it's, <clears throat> then it's setting it up, it itself up accordingly. So this is going to save, th save some time. Yeah, this is going to be one of those programmer mo moments. Will you set make your your scripts um a whole weeks just to save one day of working time yeah this is how you do it kids learn don't waste a day a, a day trying to 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 do stuff the hard way waste the whole week trying to make it easier and then do it in five minutes Okay, we did not re um, record the the destruction here. So let's see. Unity undo. So um, what happened there is um, I destroyed this object, but if when I want what wanted to um, to um, reverse that, it didn't do it. Right, because I didn't use this reverse. Um, this undo recording function probably like like it should be okay now it should work okay let's start again This is how far, how fast you can be, and then control Z, Z, and we we have the template again. So yeah, we can reverse the whole process with with just one button press. Now that's nice. So we're finished. Next two functions that we want to have three functions. Let's name those. What are the three functions that, that I need? Is Set time map uh, time map game objects color because sometimes you've, I've I've found out here yeah, um, the the color in this layer seems to be not correct um, it should be darker or something now and I don't want to go through all of the objects I just want to click a button and then pick a color oh. Uh, how do I put, get the color picker inside of this? Um, 
I don't know. How, how, how do I get a color picker inside? <coughs> um. Yeah, maybe it's a function for the future or something. I will do this when I need it. <clears throat> so the next one will be. Oh, let's also put these those three to top. Okay, the next one will be show um, only selected um, time map group and this and then show all time maps. And these are basically very easy functions. If I click click a group, I just want to uh, I want to edit on. I just want to have a function that lets me uh, select um, only those, so I don't have um, one thousand um, time maps in my current selection. I need to find them. Yeah, I'm not not going going to find them then. Okay, so <clears throat> this is going to be true, and it on only sh should enable them. Oh yeah, that's a nice little function. Yeah, yeah. Well, we want to, we, we want to go through the center. That's actually true. So we don't need. This, this function, we already have it. And then we want to do this here, but we don't want to do this two times. And we want to have two groups here. First, we want to include To have to um, set all on false, and then we want to basically just um, have our selected ones and show the center. This is going to be. I mean, we need to get them out of this selection. Look at that, let that up. Yeah, like this. So we only want to get the selected um, transforms here. And then Put them into a list. Yeah. 
Yeah. <clears throat> and in this list, we want to say, yeah, on, only show me those that I have selected right now. It's actually working. So let's do this. <sighs> Show only selected time map. Oh, f first we want to set this up. Oh, color doesn't do anything. Set this up. Six layers. Yay, and only show me those, please. And this should disable all the other time maps. And yeah, I didn't select any, any. So let's do that again. It's not working. <laughs> None of those are working anymore. What? Ah, I know what it is. I need to set them up first. And then I can... Do this. Now I can only work on this time... Uh, on this... Uh, lid. And the, the advantage of this is... Why am I doing this? It's pretty simple. Pretty simply simple, because now I can only see the time apps that I'm currently working on. And if I say say, hey, show me the center, it's going to show the others one again. So this is good. this is just way 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 faster to work with than trying to set them up each time and trying to find the the correct active time map because yeah as i said we have we have to to think big um or else we will, we will just explode in work okay now the last thing is unity editor function the color how do we do this <clears throat> Can we just open this? Oh, we can. Okay. They're, they're pretty much doing the same thing that we want to do. Let's try this out. Oh, it's an editor window. Hmm. What do we extend? I don't think we extend editor window. No, we have mono behavior. Uh, that might be a problem. We need to do a new class for that. But um, aside from that, it might be easily doable. So I have this uh, editor input dialog. And let's make a new class. A new class here. 
and it's going to be named Editor Color Picker Window Okay Want to open that? Oh, I didn't do anything. Come on I just want to work. Come on, come on. Uh, Unity is still loading. I'm trying to find the old, the old function that we want to remove there, here. What? Yeah, this one. And delete it here. And here I want to um, first copy paste everything from from the Unity API. Copy paste it this. Okay. Give it the correct path, and when we do this, <clears throat> um, we want to do this. Um, <laughs> and we want to. What? Boom. Mm. <laughs> we want to basically not not go and do anything in the hierarchy. Don't know what what this if does yeah. So let's get rid of it. And let's. Um, say we have we have t the game objects t and then just want to find do they have the these parallax to no and then we want to set their color for each White window in T, it components and children. Um, it's a little bit in, in effect, in, inefficient because it's going to multiple objects multiple times, but it's not that important yet. I also want to record this change though. So undo card object sprite window. Okay. Change colors.
Okay, now let's try this out. So, our dream is we want to do all of this stuff always in five minutes. <laughs> this is the dream. I wonder if it's possible. So, let's select this background here. Change colors. Oh, there it is. I have this color pickers. Make them red. Change. Oh, it it, it, it works immediately. Like, that's nice. So I can now change. 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 Yeah, and yeah, now I can, can edit a, a whole group on the fly. If I later see, okay, um, in, in order to make this look good, I have to Oh, I think this works here. I, I think this works here. Um, in the foreground, they have to be darker. Oh no, I, I think I messed up, guys. Oh, that's the trees. That's the, the works. Look how bright they are. Oh no, I don't think I can change them all. Except I can now. Except I can now, just with one button press. That's that, that that's the power of custom scripts. Yeah, that's the power. It's nice. Let's put in more. Two. What this is? Foreground ten. I think it's, it's this one. Okay. Let's paint in some rocks. Okay. We don't see anything if I do this. Why? Oh, it's all in layer one. That's background. Um, it should be ten. Yeah. Just look at how many how many objects are there in the are uh, there in the back uh, foreground. I would never be able to do this. Uh, no, if you would like to do this by hand, drag them, them in there, have a lot of random values. Good luck. Good luck. This is going to take forever. Yeah, and now I just go here. And you, you just see all these rocks down there how they're shifting you jump okay you, you don't really see too much when you're jumping these are they also go up and down with different speeds and you can see it in the background here but often it's not that noticeable but here it is like just look at this you can barely see the enemies though here so if I do my my battle here, uh. Uh. Oh, okay. yep. so fighting in, in such an environment is kind of hard. Oh, 
But this this has, has really some some weird feel to it. Hey, jumping up and down. Yay. <laughs> I mean, my <clears throat> but it feels much nicer than doing this over here, where it's basically nothing. And you you go into this, and it's ba basically nothing there, and nothingness. Yeah, and then you go over here. Well, it's a little bit bad. Oh, and I'm dead. <laughs> I also have to learn how to play my game. Someday I will be able. <sighs> oh, none of friends. One of his arm was um, touching the ladder that was causing an error. Okay. Good to know. Oh man, I'm a little bit excited. Oh man. <laughs> you might not see it, but I'm a little bit excited just to maybe see see all of the work that we did here um, in action. There's still some, some way to go. It's still way more way to go. Um, the next thing that I said is I want to have these two fields here set up automatically and then we're pretty much at the end of this setup. And so this is the last optimization that we maybe could do. <clears throat> After then it's go on only going to be, um, yeah, do it. <clears throat> So the, the the problem here is I want to have a trigger when I select one of these tile maps. And that's actually something that I have no idea if it's even possible. So let's see. Unity trigger when selecting tile map. Can we even trigger this? So as I thought, ah, sorry, but feeling a little bit cold and um, trying to set up my um, um, blanket. I, I I got a blanket underneath me and trying to set it up. So all of these don't tell me um, something about select selecting time map events.
Hmm. So how do we get this trigger here? We select something. I want to get to, to have a trigger. And we select this. look in the custom editor script that we have which are for example the brushes <clears throat> and i'm looking into the brushes right now because i know there's, there's a lot of stuff that i can learn from it yeah on paint inspector gy <clears throat> Yeah, I have no idea what they're doing here. Mervigist Seer. Ah uh, yes, finally a fellow C Chad. Yeah, C Sharp, they are all Giga Chats. <laughs> Hi, Mr. B uh, biggest Sir. I mean what what else would you work in? <laughs> Where are you from, brother? Are you from? I'm from Germany. Germany. Yeah, you can, can you can hear it from my accent. It's may maybe a little bit easy to hear that. Yeah, and yeah, I'm trying trying to do all my stuff whenever I can in C sharp. Yeah, it's like comically German. It's like comically German. Oh. Oh, come on, okay, I can't go overdo it. Mostly people say they, they don't hear my German, but okay, thank you. <laughs> it's it's a, good... a good thing. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> well, at least I can, I'm very proud that I can speak um, very fluent English and don't, uh, I'm not at the level where I'm at um, uh, third, third class in school where you barely can speak english and everybody is uh nervous when they they have to speak <laughs> where are you from my brother my friend is in germany right now and he's partying uh, at the berghain right now He's sexu sexual, uh, sexual deviant. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, I am from the U.S. of A. Okay, you are from the United States. Okay, thank you for joining in. And also nice. I think you're the, the first U.S. American I had uh, on stream and um, saying he's coming from U.S. America. So I had a lot of people like from Canada, Spain, friends, but not U.S. America yet. Um, was really surprised about that because US America just has a lot of people. I think 300 million. I think 300 million people in US America, which is yeah. <laughs> and I just thought the proximity would be very high that I would see someone coming from America, but maybe it's because the time um, that I normally stream. Yeah, but no C sharp uh, the chats here. I'm all by myself. Oh, that's that's uh, that's sad to hear. I have to say, C sharp is such a nice language. C sharp is one of the the best languages I've um, written in. So I'm working in Unity right now, and um, C sharp basically and the the. Um, C-Sharp and the API of Unity 
They are so well written. Yeah. Now, C Sharp has one one of the things that I don't like that um, you you immediately see which kind of code is not from me. And that is, uh, if they put in um, um, var, var for variable, I normally always specify which kind of variable I use because I think um, in in good code you don't need the IDE to tell you which kind of um, uh, variable it is but aside from this i i love everything about c sharp it's easy it's quick and it it, it doesn't it doesn't require me to do a, a, any any weird ways uh look things up how it, you have to do it in c sharp and yeah it's just amazing it's just very easy to work with and it's also very efficient To be honest, um, Unreal Engine is in C++ and th that, that's the thing that puts me off the most about you, uh, Unreal Engine um, because C++ is um, a, a very strong language but it's al also one of the languages which is not written to, to be very time efficient. I worked in C Sharp for six years. Backend developer. Oh, nice. So now the new language that every, everyone thinks is very good is Python. But I have to say I'm not the biggest th fan of Python. Um, I think it's it's very good for just easy easy scripting. Um, and for me, Python is a little bit too easy. <laughs> And it's also one of the scripts that um, languages it has a lot of um, it's not very efficient with the system resources. Ah, but I don't get what I wanted to do here. I wanted to to find how they trigger when you open this menu here. Okay, now it's compiling. Python is for silly data nerds who need to import 30 libraries uh, just to run their black box machine learning model. Yeah, and then and then again. I don't understand why machine learning and um, AI is done with Python um, because Python is a very, very bad language for performance. The performance of uh, Python is abysmal. Um, probably, probably they, they use uh, the, the, the core of their um, machine learning and uh, uh, AI um, use some C++ or something else. And uh, I don't know. But, this this is something that only uh, always uh, bothered me with Python. Why do you p use Python for the most performance-heavy tasks like machine learning and uh, AI? Even though the the performance of of Python is really really bad, it doesn't even work. Yes, exactly. It's just an interface to, to models which are probably written in C++. Yeah, uh, that's what I thought, yeah. So, um, I, I, and then, I'm just saying, it really surprised me that, that, that they even considered using Python there. Um, probably it's not go, going to be a bottleneck and then, then, then they just run their libraries in C++ or something. Um, but aside from this, yeah. Often when I see people program in Python, they just type everything like uh, they don't define any variable. They always call them um, just well and do their do their code in there, and then they don't even even have a, often a compiler that tells them that they are doing wrong. They are just uh, trying to uh, run the program and try the try what they did wrong and. Also, I don't don't understand how how debugging is supposed to be efficient like that. So I would never do this like that. The good ones, at least. Oh, yeah. I bet I bet there's there's um, machine learning in Python, and then they are like, 
Oh no, yeah. Our, our um, program is, is uh, needing two times the resources that a normal machine learning uh, code would need just because we do any, everything in, in Python. It's a shame they don't, don't teach sof software engineering and design. Yeah. Yeah, as I said, I think I think Python is a good kids language. <laughs> not for, not going to say that there is no py a good Python code. No, of course there there would be. But when I look at Python code, I'm often puzzled why people don't structure their their code at all. Like um, if I look at my own code, I'm, I often can say, hey, I can optimize a little bit. And then I look at Python code, and it look, just looks like they're typing it in and like like they're thinking right now. And then you. Um, get to this huge mess when they when they try bigger bigger projects, which of, co of course is um, then having um, a lot of bottlenecks. Not going to say that I saw something like that, but I saw something like that. But I cannot talk about it. <laughs> <clears throat> so right now I want to see Unity. Um, let's me. Select this time as well. I don't think I can can run a trigger when I select a time map. How long have you been a developer? I've been I have a master in science. And yeah, that, that's that's a hard question because when when I uh, at which point are you a true developer? So you, I could call myself developer for maybe. Seriously, let's let, let's say when when did I seriously code? Maybe for um, five years now, and before that was more study and getting into that. Um, when you get paid money for uh, <laughs> paid money, okay, yeah, then then it's probably probably three years. <laughs> So for, for me, it was it's not all, always uh, the it's not the same for me though because for for me it's not about making money but it's about making good code, and I think if if your code is good enough then you can call yourself a developer. I mean, there's open source developer who who make shit. They they just do their job and live in their mom's apartment, and just publish some libraries and people work, uh, work with that and they don't don't earn, earn anything they're still developers so yeah there are some edge cases <laughs> yeah good code is a give, given yeah it's also hard to make good code actually so um when i was working with this game for example let's look at the player script and this is an old script so the, the player, if I look at him, he has multiple scripts here. And the problem is that you, you start to learn all the things here. And in this this script here is way too long. Like you see that that many input fields. That's really, really not nice. You you can guess how the co code is looking like. These are the this is the main um player script. It has 2800 code lines so yeah well at least i i use uh, things like enums but <laughs> it's ba it's basically just saying um what skills did you learn that that is uh, over here and what kind of effects do you want to spawn well probably i should have put them into a different class like just um um player skills a new class for that and i'm going to do that maybe later um too lazy to do it right now and so this is just something that you learn when when you're coding and as i said when, when i started started coding um yeah i just i just try to make things work and you don't pay too much attention my mentor was an italian who uh, thought like you he was from North it Italy. He used to say uh, he was basically German. I think I see a pattern. <laughs> Safe to say, yeah, uh, Germans do love their patterns. That's uh, that's a given. Um, 
It's more of a meme and the, the Germans like like it like that. Because if you're looking back in time. Oh, thank you for following. <laughs> Mr. Biggest Sir. <laughs> Normally the Germans were, were always the, the ones who said they are working the hardest. They are these, um, the toughest in Europe and we are uh, we are a group of very hard workers and nowadays this has kind of been the past because um, yeah, nowadays it's the Americans who work the hardest like um, they have three jobs every job job has way too many hours and they're barely managing their life like that um, it's something that the Germans just uh, cannot keep up with so they're falling behind uh, right now, in being the hardest worker, workers internationally. However, if we compare ourselves to other Europeans, it's still that that somehow the Italians are always too late. <laughs> anyway, as as I was saying, uh, write your good code, make your money. Then come to the US of A, we get rich and marry big titty American blondes, shoot guns and drink beer until we die. Ooh. <laughs> mm. So you have all the America memes. <laughs> well, actually, actually working in the Americas is not, uh, it's not a meme. It's reality, yeah, it's also... As a developer, you get paid uh, twice as much in New uh, America. So I guess there's something behind it. So in game development, especially in game development, in Germany you don't get paid um, a lot at all. At all. Um, I think you get paid less than the normal developer as a game developer in Germany because in Ge Germany just doesn't have any good uh, successful gaming companies because the government has not supported IT de uh, departments for ye for a decade now for two decades there hasn't been any good support that was was more like symbolic and that's why uh, Germ German IT has fallen behind there there are a lot of people they. The, the reason why we, are, we still have IT is just because we have good universities, but the government policies for our companies, they are shit. <clears throat> so, what I'm working on right now is I'm trying to make these layers. Um, Auto set up set themselves up automatically really fast. Um starting order five. Start from zero to fifty. Let's put a minus there. Okay, yeah, okay, that works. Well let's set them up. Give more information. And now I could could start drawing, so mm, save myself ten minutes there. <clears throat> so I would really love to be a, a developer, but in Germany, yeah, there's not a lot of good jobs as developer. So I'm a little bit of sad because I'd always dream to be a developer. So now I'm trying to do it for myself, and but I still have to work. I I, I still have another job, of course. Because I can't can't feed myself from nothing. And this is what on layer fifty. What's the other job? Um, the other job is in um, machine production. Um, it's development also in C sharp in machine production. We we produce machines. <laughs> That's basically what what I can say about it. That's that's also the area where Germany is, of course, strong is uh, uh, strong in is in making machines uh, that produce other machines. That actually actually is the the thing that this machine can do. 
Now, um, yeah, it's a modular machine that can do a lot of stuff. It depends on what, what we assign it to. So, I want to, to go from back to front. Ah, okay, sex bots, nice. Yeah, you could do a sex bot with it, but I haven't tested that out. I'm not allowed to. Are you making those uh, giant rotating arm machines? Those things are cool. Uh, no. <laughs> no. It's more, uh, like I said, it's a modular machine. It can um, can have different sensors. It's a machine and you can, you can uh, just put other modules on it. So it's a machine and you put on some modules on it. And you, I even don't care and I don't know what, what kind of stuff people do with this i'm just there so that i work write the code so it can, it can be very very modular and before i came there they did everything hard coded and then i came there and said that's horrible please stop it <laughs> that's basically what i did and and then i said taught them how to write the code well it's bas basically what i did there Because um, when, when I was starting there, I saw the code, how they do things, and I immediately could say, I could see that they hard coded too many, too many parts of their um, modules. They put module, modules into the machine, and every module can do something else. It can spin, it can be an arm, it can drive somewhere and put two things together, um, do do some tooling jobs. I don't know. It's just you can put in tools and you. Uh, the user can can give them some functions and when i started there they just hard coded every tool and i was like what the, what the, uh, what, the fuck? what are you doing <clears throat> you need you need to make um make them uh, modular so you don't don't make any assessments what the user is going to do with them just try to make a generic structure so it um, works for a lot of cases not have these um, kind of hard-coded uh, objects that, are, that need to be the same every time very nice i will find find you when i start my company we'll fly out uh, from uh, from germany and confirm convince you to work there yeah, if, um, but only, and only, I will work for you, but only if it's paid well, if I can get rich, marry a big city American blonde, shoot guns, and drink lots of beer. <laughs> anyway, for now I must be going and tell us uh, other non-C-Sharp uh, channels. Good luck with your game, of course. <laughs> Thank you, also have fun. So now I'm stuck with the hardest part, Googling. Unity time up events, what's that?
No, that's not what I want. Oh, it's internal. Okay, it seems to be in it, it was internal in So this is basically the C sharp code of a time map. And yeah. There's a public event. But only for the tile change. <clears throat> So they changed this actually, but I want to see what if the tile map changed. Hmm. No, it's not in there. Let's see, there should be a drop down somewhere and find it here. That's annoying. Active, active time map. Got active time map. Ooh. Okay, so some someone did did exactly what we want to do, but vice versa. He changes the um the active time map. Mm. He changes the uh, active time map according to which um, brush he selects. But I want to change the brush according to the time map you select. So nearly there.
Can they also do some name changes? I have found there the call the event though. It's very complicated. That didn't help me too much. That's... Uh, that's a lot of complicated stuff. Mm. Uh, sorry. <laughs> and, um, let's make a call. I need to get some sleep, um, so let's make a call. Let's, let's try this one more time. Let's see. Let's go through the Google events here and try to uh, get something to work. Or once we decide to to um, once I make the decision to stop working on this, and give up on it, or to go on and um, paint. And I'm, I'm making the next break and I'm just going to get a half an hour of sleep. And that's basically it. Because I'm, I'm a little bit sick today. And it just happens that if you're sick, you need some sleep.
So unfortunately, I don't see any event, and uh, so uh, we probably have to go through all of these methods. Nothing in here. Hmm. That's, an, <clears throat> that's a quite annoying. So let's go into the grid brush inspector. <clears throat> grid brush inspector. Let's look at the base. the inspector <laughs> inspector can I just search for drop no active Yeah, that's that's actually it. Thank you. 
with the factory and trades and <coughs> trades. There's not a lot of them. <sighs> but we don't have anything like um on click. So we still haven't found out where the um what what is triggered when we click the time map. Just kind of the whole point of what we want to do. <clears throat> Sorry. Um So let's just try to code in here. Doesn't find anything to import. Let's see, maybe there's an event in here. Tile change, tile position change. They, they don't do anything for us. Damn it. It's kind, of, kind of, yeah, that's kind of annoying. We can't find the the trigger. We have to keep searching. That's just how programming works. Sometimes you just have to grind it down. Keep searching. That's also not it. Oh, damn it. Mm. We are out of Google results here. Yeah. Damn it. It would be really easy once you, you, you know how to trigger this event. After that, you just set some numbers and you're done. But, um, that's the point. We don't get to get, get this trigger here when we select a try time map. One more try in Unity. Trigger active time map. Hmm. 
Event. Hmm. Maybe maybe we can we can just make a new thread here and try to get some help. Because I I'm out of options here. So let's create a new thread. <clears throat> And the title will be um, trigger event and selecting an active time map. It's provided with a screenshot. And a snipping. Mm -hmm. oh, I have to put my mouse mouse here and uh, try to make a screenshot with, with my keyboard. I have to, to find this in my cloud, which is a little bit annoying. Open it with paint. And here I want, just want to have this. And save it into my public um, pictures folder. Trying to post it into, into the Unity uh, threads. Oh, ah, yeah. I am trying um, to make my uh, my editor to make time maps faster. Paint pine to paint pine time maps faster. Anyone know how to trigger an event when the active time map is changed? I have custom brushes and want um, them to automatically Really, um, with some values when you select a certain file map. For example, sorting order, custom game, object brushes. <clears throat> now I also know a workaround for this, but I'm 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 going to wait for the answer. Greetings, John. Hey. Hey. Okay, create a threat. I'm 
Bitcoin would have been kind of nice to not have this attached here, but um, yeah. <clears throat> okay, so I made a call, and um, the call basically was when I do this, um, and I'm I'm I, uh, I'm stuck, and I'm going to get some sleep. So since I'm sick, I should get myself some nice little speak sleep here. And I will just um, put the, the stream to be right back and put a cooldown, um, a countdown timer to one hour. And after that, I'll be right back. Because, yeah, I'm just uh, a little bit sick, so my body will need some rest. And just doing um, half an hour power nap is just very healthy right here. And I should not overdo it. And also know my limits. So, thank you for watching. Um, and I'll be right back in uh, probably 40 minutes or 50 minutes. So, see you then.
Hey, let's turn on the light. I, I'm back again. I just uh, took around and did go to and sleep a little bit. Um, because, yeah, I'm feeling sick. And I said, yeah, I'm going to power nap now. Um, it's no use. And I might do another power nap in two hours or so. But next time I might end the stream then. But still, let's try to get going here and to get uh, get something done. So. We are trying to edit this um, um, scene right here. Okay. So. <clears throat> Let's look into our unity thread if somebody answered and nobody answered us. So we don't have any idea if this will ever going to be faster. See, is this even visible here? Hmm. This has one view. Why are all, all the, those other um, threads in thick, la thick uh, letters, but not mine? <laughs> maybe it's just because. No, I thought maybe, maybe because I, 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 I did. You may, may need to click this, but no. Uh, question. What? Red text question. So I cannot add the text question. So how do I do this then? I also want, want this question button. I don't want, want to have uh, thick letters. No. Red <laughs> tools. Edit title. No prefix. Question. Save. Now we have this question button. That's that looks much better, much better. But yeah, that's a very specific uh, question, I guess. I guess we have to wait some some days until this gets solved or something. Ah. Maybe there's Unity Get Active Tile Map.
This one. So you might do this with reflection. Now reflection is very ineffective in Unity um, when it comes to code execution, but it's in an editor function. It's not. Uh, it doesn't matter. And just don't use reflection when you are doing update functions. That yes, they they are um, supposed to be a little bit more cost uh, cost intensive. Quit painting state palette. So there we have an easy easy answer. So we had some luck here. There it is. Let's make a new item here. Now this one is not going to be um, an option in the menu. I am map changed. Just see what what kind of what kind of um, options we have here. Okay, no. Let's see what does this return a game object. Let's see if Let's say um, point get component some script okay. Can we add a listener to this? <clears throat> so we, let's only keep this tag uh, tab open. Just this. Okay, this gets a brush. And this is how we select a brush. So maybe you want to copy this. I 
think it's reflection. Yeah. So this is <clears throat> a little bit tricky. Let's create a new script here. It's for the editor, but it's going to be put into mono behavior into the style maps. Um, I'm still going to put this into customized workflows, even though it's not really an editor function. <coughs> Tile map info. Tile map collection in info. And this is going to be on each of those tile maps. So what I want with this is... Come on. Isn't initialized yet. Because there's still um, an error in here. Okay, let's put it out of editor. Put it into maps do that. Um and then we have to create a trade. Come on, load faster, load faster. There's mono behavior, so we should be able to put this inside of here. Come on. Need to get rid of the space inside of here. And this will cost Unity to reload this. Oh no. <clears throat> okay. Oh, it's reloading. So we just managed to manage to do this. Time map. Selection info. So let's give this selection info a brush. It has been removed out of this list here. <laughs> this is unfortunate because I have some hesitation going into Unity. If it's, Unity is going to load every time I click on it.
Hmm. So what we want here is we don't want to have anything but the start method. We don't even want that to be honest. Get rid of that. Want to have an enum. Enum my enum. It's a little bit private. Grifid. Private Enum Blush. Okay. And in there we want we want to have this brush as a public setting. Um, we have to make this public, okay. <clears throat> so then we have to put into it the brush, but we cannot read it out because it's just in the editor. Ha, that's bad. What else would we like to have here? Um, public in sorting order. Public in um, order in layer. So we, I exactly know what to, what I want to do, but I don't know how I can trigger this. Uh, so back to the starting point. So I, I would have to define start in here. Also have some kind of variable to save the current brushes. Hmm. So, uh, brushes, I don't know what variable this is, so this is uh, some, one of the few, ca few cases where I would do this. Um, Uh, okay, we can just get a little bit list with the brushes. <laughs> okay. Specify this. Thank you. And we want to have this as a... Um, as a variable. So, what do we then do? Yeah, we need to look up um, C sharp. Um, listen to variable change.
going to be complicated. That doesn't matter. Current active file map. And instead of this, I want to have the Can I do this? No, of course I can't. Ah, that 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 would have been too nice. Oh, because this is an end, yeah. Oh, okay. It's a game object. And then it works. Oh. 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 Oh, yes. Um so So then we would just check unchanged if it has some info for us and if it doesn't we haven't set it up then we do nothing then first let's just debug this and say foo foo yay if, if, if this is going to work, I'm going to laugh. Yes, this is how, how long it took to research this and then how easy the code is to write. Okay, now. Let's clear the console. Ah, it didn't work. Oh, I didn't, I didn't give, give those, um, the, the, uh, info though. So, add component. Now I have. So let's try this again. Okay. Ah, damn it, it's, it's, I got it wrong, I got it wrong. This has to be inside of the palette. Ah, 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 ah. Damn it. Is there no on on no on value changed or something in here now? On value no. Wait a minute. Well, that's unfortunately not going to work ever. Because the, what I did there is basically if. You can do this, but you have to do it inside of the grid painting state class of Unity. I cannot edit. I could edit that, but uh, let's go. Let's look at this. Uh. Is 
Hey, there's a, there's a, there's actually an action. Let's change. Yay! Heads internal. Ha. That's the ah, oh God, God damn it! That's internal. Yeah, that, that could that could be the end. Because since it's internal, we cannot we cannot catch it. Yeah. But the event is... The event is public. So can I do something with this? So what would, would I do with this? C sharp use um action event what exactly is this it's an action <laughs> it's a book You can get this action and trigger it. I want to to listen to this. Let's just um, maybe. What a function here. Yeah. Public void. This is just a test here. Yeah. Static void. Let's see what um <clears throat> oh, what was it this again? Quit painting state. Okay, we cannot add a very really function like add listener. Uh, can, I want to listen to this event. To the action. Okay. 
Okay, that looks... Um, public, static, void, S2. Ah, damn it, we cannot call it. Okay, I have no idea what I'm doing here. So let's let's uh, try to <clears throat> look it up. C sharp trigger when action is called. I don't know. I don't really understand what I'm doing here. And just as usual when, when you are doing something new. Get the collections of actions. To apply when the air event occurs. It's not too bad. C sharp add to action. Damn it, there's a lot of things to learn now. Delegates are immutable. The plus equals operator creates a new delegate with an invocation list consisting of the invocation list from the left side followed by the invocation list by the right hand side. Okay, it's already lost track. What, what the hell is he doing? Stop the saying. Um. I have no idea what, what this does. Um... <sighs> C 
So we can we can add a function, but why this does this function has have to return an action with a game object? I don't get it. I really don't get it. <laughs> okay, let's see how they do it. Can I edit this? No, yeah. I'm a coach, but... Carl C sharp listen to action action simple event So I don't even even get why why they, they do this for example, but let's try it out. <clears throat> so this doesn't seem to work in our case. I just don't know. I don't understand why we need to, to return an action object. Hmm. Callback when the type palette is active, palette has changed. This is so easy and I don't get it. So, but this would be pretty much what I want to do.
Hmm. This belongs in this top version. And the, the whole thing is just basically very, very complicated. So he's doing it with the events, not actions. I'm not sure if this guy uh, has has compiled this. I think he uh, he mixes up my event and then simple event. Um, yeah, I think I think this is supposed to be named simple event. Is it? Oh, so, I don't know. I don't know. Um. This is confusing. This is uh Yeah, there's usages of this one. Let's see how they do this here. On wash changed. Okay, let's go to the implementation of this one. Interesting though. The coding here is a little bit different. Okay, yeah, okay. It, it was just some weird finding out the syntax of this thing. This is bullshit. <laughs> this is bullshit. 
This is bullshit. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so now we can do what we want to do. Okay. Our goal today is make our process even faster by saying if we change anything inside of the brush, um, in, if we change the, uh, the palette, we're going to basically select the brush by, us, by, by ourselves. <clears throat> and here we are going to set up the brushes. Uh, it doesn't do a lot. Yeah, we also, yeah, then we don't need this um, list to be honest. Not yet, at least. So, if palette. Get component time map selection info. It's not now. Debug lock away. Most of this is going to work. Oh, I don't. I, I, I fear this is not going to work, but it's worth a try. If, it, if this work, works, it would be great would be great now this is more luxury than actually grind um, i will make want to make the call oh something did happen Object or, uh, or reference not set to an instead of an object. So, I don't know what caused this error. Let's not do anything in here. But it seems, it seems that, that we are really listening to something. Ah. Damn. This will never work. So let's try it one more time. Maybe it's go it's just nulling or something. Or it's just the call. I I don't know what, what, what kind of error this is. Yeah. This is annoying. <clears throat> so <clears throat> now we, we every time we recall this method and it won't do anything except uh, causing an error <laughs> ok 
kind of sad because it looks like this is the way they intended to us to do this but yeah i can't find out the difference okay let's let's look at one more time in the into the brush changed but they uh, they did the, the uh, they did the listener here just trying to copy their um functions So they were just using private void. Hmm, I think I can't use private void. Oh, I can. Okay. So let's try to to do this in not static con uh, context. Hmm, I have to do with that. He doesn't want to, to add a static listener. No, we, we still call, get an error every time. So... What's the difference? Between... <clears throat> this function oh, um this function and our function okay let's Probably do this one more time with this. Uh, try with this function here because it's also a game game object. But I don't don't have any high hopes that this is going to uh, do, to give us, us any enlightenment how to do this. So yeah, private void then game object something. Private void test uh, game object something. So we do, don't do anything different. I don't get uh, put this uh, this 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 here. No. Um. So, quit painting state.
just uh, be retarded now. Okay, no difference. Well, it could be that because it's in turn. I don't know. <clears throat> All right. uh, I think it's internal. I don't see any other difference right now. So the, what we are trying to do here is impossible the whole time. So we waste maybe two, two, two hours to try something that is impossible because the functions for that are in Unity, but they are internal, so we can't access them. I'm not 100% sure that this is the case, but um, yeah, bas basically we, we try to listen to this and do some some custom stuff there and once we add our our listener our function to to this action um it's not going to perform Let's clear this. What? We still get that error? But why? Hmm. Let's restart the editor. Maybe the editor is bugged. I, I, I have the feeling that like the editor is bugged. So th that might have been a problem. That <clears throat> the editor got stuck somewhere. And once we try to uh, do... We, because we first did this wrong. Once we did this right, it still didn't work because uh, it was stuck. I'm also not sure how this this start function works to be honest. What the hell? How is this bug now? I don't get it. Every time I think it's bugged now. What? Okay, <clears throat> so let's set the uh, layout back to default. Damn, that is annoying.
Okay, now that got, got rid of the arrow. Oh, thank God. Okay. So let's add our test. Let's see if this is going to bug it out again. So, yeah, sometimes sometimes uh, there's some really weird um, errors going on when you're trying to make your custom scripts. I think it's just coming with experience. Okay, now it's not bugged anymore. But this method is not called. Because it, it would debug lock something. <sighs> it's kind of unfortunate. Also, I'm, I'm a little bit uh, disappointed that it puts the time maps here in just a random order. I don't have any idea why it puts it, it in there in this order. This makes no sense. We also created them um, one after each other in a completely different order. I think this might be some kind of, of um, binary tree and it just reads, reads them out or a hash table and just reads them out. Um, whatever it finds first or something. That's why they are ran, uh, in, in a random order. Okay, let's reset this. if this uh, is ever initialized. Okay. So <clears throat> this script never initializes itself. So <clears throat> I need to look it up. Unity initialize editor script. Mm, maybe on awake. Nothing. 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 How was it done like this? Okay. Like class initializa initialization. Maybe it's going to call itself now. No, it's not initializing itself. Let's see if, it, if we can, can even do this. Init, let's just call this init class. Let's 
see if this works. And I should shut up about any, any idea for why this is not working because I don't have any idea why where the problem could be. So init class it says it initialized. Unfortunately, though, even though we now know that the listener is, is listening, nothing's happening. And it should actually... It should actually um, say, Hooray! 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 Yeah. It was worth, worth a try. Okay, let's maybe look if somebody figured out how to use this. And uh, it has to contain these words. Okay, my uh, damn it! This looks really, really like it could be useful. And my um, virus scanner says no. So this is very complicated. It's extremely complicated what we do here. So... <clears throat> it looks like we are doing it just right, but nothing's happening. Hmm... Can you 
empty um, in it lights editor script Not an editor function. Ah, damn it, damn it, damn it. We need to make a new class, but it doesn't matter. Maybe it can't work with model behavior, but that, that's really just a guess. It's more a guess. No, yeah, I take it back. I have no, no idea what's happening here. So let's just try this out. Um, time map. Time map change listener. And this is going to be inheriting from the editor of class. And we have some some of these weird cases where it's uh, saying um, error, not error, no error, error, no error, error, no error. Looks like this initialization is not called. Mm, no, it's not called. Won't do anything. Ah. Oh, initialize unload. That's my that might be handy. to do it before the class name.
But it doesn't say in it, so it did, did, didn't do anything. Uh, it would have been too nice. <laughs> Wait, oh, also with this one. Oh, this has to be static. Okay. Still not convinced that this is going to do anything, but it's worth a try. So we're just just uh, going around in circles. So do we, we see in it? Yes, we do in it. Uh, we see in it two times. Now the only problem is that the, that the um, time of change uh, is not recorded. Sad. Really, really sad. Yeah. So we're learning stuff, but um, we're learning the wrong things. <laughs> I guess it doesn't help us. Uh, learning stuff if we if we have have a listener that simply doesn't work for some reason if this has, has to be static yeah I st still think the static is not not the problem though. The static just says this has to be one one time in, inside of here. It's one time function privately. It's not going to change. God damn it, that is so hard. Let's look into the forum. I want to see my messages. Let's keep this live by. I have found. I'm trying to listen to it. Oh, Eva. Enough. When I assign a uh, function the action set set 
Um, let's just copy this code. to add some code here. Insert code. And post. So maybe somebody can pick this up. I'm not, not expecting anyone to, to be able to help me, but um It's worth a try. I have, have, haven't ha had any time that anybody could help me with programming so far. So maybe I'm just imagining things. Like uh, maybe guys, the people who, who get answers on Stack Overflow are not, not, uh, are not uh, like me. Uh, maybe they, they know how to please the algorithm gods or something. So I ask a very, very specific question. We could do this differently though. Oh no. <laughs> so we have this time map info selection info. Let's keep when we just want to set the odd uh, the sorting order in the order and layer uh, automatically every time. And so we could just go time map, select the brush and keep drawing. And there's another event that we can trigger and that is when we select a brush. I would say, hey, you just failed making the um, the functions for catching the time map. How can you be sure that you, you can catch uh, selecting one of these, uh, these brushes here? Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure at all, but if I um, click on a brush here, these are my custom brushes, and I'm pretty sure that I initialize them when I'm clicking on them. So let's give this um, one last try, because um, we can at least read out the current palette. And if the palette has um, um maybe maybe the uh did we want to have here time map info and then we would maybe be able to um read it out. Let's 
see if we, if we can read it out. So trying more and more complicated stuff. Not giving up. Not yet. So let's see. Does this have info? No. This has the timemap selection info. So all 50. This one. It looks like I was mistaken. And the palette is not this one. It's this one. Ah, oh, yeah. <clears throat> Give me a second. Give me a second. Okay, okay. <clears throat> I was I was trying to to get these objects here the whole time. Hooray! And then the, we see a two-way hooray. We have so many listeners listening to this now. We want to listen to this though. So we're listening to the to the wrong thing. Okay, so let's let's see what kind of actions we have. So we we do have this um palette. I still don't find it. Let's let's see where this is implemented. Yeah. What is this? So it's maybe the, the the scene paint target that we want to listen to. Let's clear the console because there's a lot of stuff going on there. Hooray! We did it! Hooray! Hooray! Okay, we did it. We did it, guys. We did it! With... Yeah, we, we, we're pretty much just brute forcing it. It's, yeah, it's just brute forcing it. Um, trying this until until uh, it fin we finally get the correct result but over time <clears throat> by not giving up keep trying out how to do this we have now a new powerful ability So how we how do we go get the the brush inside of here and select it after? That is the only question that remains. So how do we? So we have this select brush function. 
And this is done with reflection. And they have an index. And it's kind of hard coded. With reflection. It's not nice, but it works. However, let's let's maybe uh, just see what we can can do to pick a brush. So pick brush, and it is pick brush. So what we want to do here is um. <clears throat> Grid painting state brushes. Want to get them and we want to just put them into a drop down. Let's first just read them out and I want to, to get their other names. Specify the name and let's get going. Wash, just debug the name. Let's see what can can what do we have in here as info. Where well, we have a name and we can debug log. That's not the only thing we got. Let's go. Anyways, move, pick, rotate, box. Okay. Oh, I also want to, to say get type with this. this this would return maybe this would uh, return us their class it would be kind of nice if you would get access to their class as can we do this no Well, maybe later. Step by step. Also, should um, answer this question. say with Post this reply to myself and can I close to this thread? Uh, thread tools in the title. Do close the thread. Resolved. Uh, 
had a nice little convers conversation with myself there. Not going to lie. <coughs> and if I was pick brush, um, yeah, we have really really nice function here so it it tells us every brush that we have defined here that's good with the whole collection of brushes it's also it's also telling us they are the classes so we can get get access to their classes and so could we Access their component. Well, how do we do this? So normally in in Unity, do you do anything by get component? Come on. But we can't get the component because these are grid bash bases. They're classes. So how do we access the um? the class inside of this brush so <clears throat> get type somehow brush get type we have to convert this to the class unity class get type convert class This might be done with reflection. Hmm. Yeah, with, with re this with reflection, we can just. Mm, you know, I'm not sure if we, he's constructing a new one here. Not exactly what I want to do. Hmm. So let's let's just uh, look at more tabs. No. No. Okay, this one seems useful. So let's try this. Okay. Okay, now. <clears throat> And then next suggestion is this one.
Okay. So let's random game object brush. Brush. Um, brush class is going to be. Oh, that's not working. Okay. Now it, it's only only a, a matter of syntax how we want to write this. Uh, there's nothing intelligent uh, involved in this. Hmm. <clears throat> So we can can do this. We can't do this. We need to 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 access this class because after that I want to maybe just debug dot log any class info inside of this brush class maybe just the cell count it doesn't matter. <clears throat> I'm basically trying to make any sense of this. Fortunately, we are stuck here. He's also not working with get type. Let's see if this happen this works. Um I doubt of this.
Actually, ah. Uh. Actually works. And so, <clears throat> is there a type of I don't know. It just, just let's try try out this code for once. And it looks like we will keep testing to set this up, and tomorrow we will just grind through the levels real quick. <laughs> no, at least we can do this tomorrow with super speed because we've spent weeks just trying to set up assets in a way that that it doesn't uh, that is it's super convenient and easy to to paint specific cast not valid <laughs> so this is a good brush Let's clear this. It says it's a default brush. Ah, it goes through all of the brushes. Hmm. And it's of course not going, not ever going to work. So let's only get the current grid brush. And try to do this. And this this one is just for testing reasons. Yay! And we it, it reads out there's 25 cells inside of this. Success! Success! Okay guys, now I I uh, I have nearly full control over what what over the time lapse here. We just need to do one more thing and that is um first we need to we need to um delete this time map listener because um that was more an experimental class and the next thing that we are going to do here is we're going to make this um pick pick brush um function just a little bit more nice so we want to get get the name and type of each brush here yeah we want to do that and after that we want to just have a drop down to select one of those. So how do we do this? That's the last question. Then we can can start. Uh, Unity editor uh, select the 
Splitter. Show Dropdown. We get an integer, what's selected right now? No. these options and does this have has to be a string hmm. let's, let's just see what happens <clears throat> it says this out if it's even even the drop out that, that I wanted to have Okay, now we're for once. So something was null. So what was the lull? Options? No. Selected? No. Uh, uh, I don't get it. So... Maybe this... I need to assign this to a variable, but I, I don't think that's, that's a problem. It's a little bit weird that... Uh, I don't know. <clears throat> So basically what I want to do is I want you to ask the user to select um, the brush for each palette when you assign them. And this causes an error though.
52. This causes an error. That's weird. Come on. What could be null here? I don't get it. The editor... Do I pop out? Yeah, it might be. Might have to to make a new editor window for this. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, that's a problem. So let's create a new editor window. Um, pick wash editor window. And then copy this class here. Put it inside, except exchange the name. Import this. Now import this. No, we can't take it. It's here. <clears throat> and we, do, we don't want to do anything yet. actually want to have this function inside of here though so getting there pick 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 brush
we need to also get this method here. No, uh, private. Okay, now we have every method, but we're not making any sense yet. <clears throat> we want to have the options. Let's first try to say string option uh, list. Oh, no, we can we can actually do it like this. No, <laughs> sorry, sorry, I'm 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 confused. So we want to say we want to have an option list. Option list. It's going to be a list, but a string list. Option list. It's going to be a new list. So does this have to be yeah um <clears throat> and in this we want just to check if this wash it is of the type um of our self defined type and if it's um of our self-defined type then only then we want to do stuff and we want to add a name to our list so I want to later to get this option list to this function but we can't we need to, to convert the option list to, to an array to array okay that's actually possible so no worries about that one we don't know any of these options here <laughs> yeah that's bas basically it and then we want to pick a brush and select it Going be to be our private integer. Don't need this option list. Also, don't want to do anything else here. Just try this out. What happens? So we can pick a brush. And what, what we want to do with this, when we make these, these time maps, I want to immediately assign a brush and automatically pick their, their sorting layer. So examples. Ah, now it only finds this brush. I can press create. I'm about 25 now. Okay, on create I will also want to close. So how do I close the window? Ah, editing windows. I always hated that that in um. I always hated that in um, informatics. I don't know. It just doesn't doesn't seem to be fun to me to be editing windows. So we <coughs> so 
So we can pick a brush. <laughs> but we um, can cast it to a game object brush. Uh, And there's still some wonky parts, but we are getting there. It's, it probably will take um, the whole even, uh, night. We are not all night, huh? So now here in, inside of this there has to be a close function. At least there should be. Close. Yeah, it's close. Big blush. Close. Okay, now we can't cast everything to a random game object brush. But they, we can check the inheritance, maybe. So. Yes. Do you know what, what makes, makes people happy? As a, once with a joke, it was like this. You know what? Having finding a good partner does not make you happy. Closing one hundred tabs after you found a solution in programming that is that is going to make you happy. Actually, there's some truth behind it. Then, Closing one one hundred tabs in uh, in your browser after searching for a solution really feels rewarding. I don't know, just you get, you have done all this stuff and now you see you can get go on with whatever we wanted to do. But I'm getting distracted now. What I wanted to do? Great. Okay. Great. 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 Um. We wanted to um it a great game but in C sharp check wow this is something with object types inheritance check Use inherited glass functions something. So with this so our problem is this. We have this um game of random game object brush and it's inherits to all our other brushes here and our problem is not that that we can't get the function. We actually could just try to to get any brush that we defined here and try them out and uh, and check every type of brush. But I want to to maybe just check if the if it has inherited from this uh, game objects brush. That would be great. And then I also don't don't care for for any other functions except for the game object brush functions so <clears throat> so 
Un ADF. Ah, let's let's get back to to um easy things. Okay, now we could we can we are allowed to do something like this. And can we put in something more generic in here? I guess not. Ah. Like type, type is equal to put it in here. I think that was not allowed. Um. Reflections, reflections. I hate them. <laughs> I really kind of hate the reflections. The, the reflections are great. You can do a lot of stuff with reflections, but it's just looking them them up that is that is always a little bit tedious. No, still don't know how to do this, but I know it's possible. It's definitely possible what I want to do. I just have to keep keep searching, keep searching. Be close.
convert to base and uh, convert to inherited class uh, So this this is basically um, how you do it. Um, so what I do have to do here is uh, like when when casting. Let's f f first do this cast here. Let's cast. We cast it to. I have to, to do this, yeah. And th this looks stupid, but then I have to get the type in here. So how do we get, how do we do this? Ah. Yeah, that, that's a good question. Um, cast type to class. Okay, let's try this code. Now you, you immediately see that this is go probably going to, to work. I think he wants to insert the class name here. Ah. Okay, let's see. Um, 
sorry. You have to ensure that type is an instance uh, sense of class and then cast it. Of course, you have to, to handle the case of it not being a class. What if you don't know the class? It's class. I don't know the class. It's a little bit of a problem. So th this guy seems to, to be able to cast it to a class. <laughs> oh, that's also not what we want. God damn it. With invocation comes not on only uh, with reflection comes not only that that it's um, more complicated. It's also that the answers oft often don't don't give you what you want. Come on, why does it have to be because that complicated? Just when, when we are getting close, of course, there has to be something that is generically... Uh... So, let's first maybe try to fill the dropout menu. Um... C sharp, check if... Yes. Inherits. Inherits. Yes.
Okay. Let's just uh, try that out. And let's see what this does. No, it's not working. Okay, we can um that simply fight it oh okay now there's an error there's still an error yeah need to find that out later okay let's see if that, that at least um fits out our drop or drop down menu which which would be the first thing that we want to do Yay, now we have all our brushes here. And only those that, that are our custom brushes. That's great. That's great. So... Now we just have to, to cast the, the pick brush um, somehow. And we also want to give us the um, the correct brush. This should be named Pick. And we want this to be amazing. And how do we make this amazing? By letting us pick the brush. Yeah. Um... So we also want to make a list. With all the brushes. And we want to, to do the same. With the, as with the string. And in the end. This will tell us which one we have selected. So then we have selected the brush and then we can pick it.
nearly there. Nearly there. And this is the last hard method that we have to do. And I'd say if, if once once I'm finished with this, I'm going to end the stream. But I will, will keep going and going until I, I've um, finished this. So, so that tomorrow everything will be finished, working, and we can just paint, 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 paint. And yeah, that's like I tried out before. Before I was, um, I was doing do, uh, doing the first twice here. With okay, let's show them with with these ones. When I was trying them out for the first time um, and trying to draw this. I said, let's draw this in 10 minutes, and I didn't make it, and needed 25 minutes, and these 25 minutes were really, really stressful, and I, um, I know that with the queue and methods, we have sped up, uh, sped it up a little bit, but um, if you keep working on this, we can make it in 10 minutes, and that's a lot of, of, of improvement. Because I don't know how how many um, timers I want to draw. Uh, I just know that, that it's a lot of work, and um, you can see with these with these um, dots here. And I wasn't consistent with with my um, with my parallax speed. It was messy. Um, yeah, I, I just just didn't know while typing which parallax speed each each one does. Now this one is generated. Now each one has a good parallax speed. That is good. And now I need to just make that the the um, each of the tile maps tells me exactly what kind of brush I want to pick. It sets up the the correct sorting layer order um, and the correct order in layer immediately when and picks me with the brush basically so it does all that work just for me and i just just can paint i don't have, have to set up anything that, that that would and that would be great if i could do that and i will I will make this happen. Um, um, this is the last step that that is difficult. After that, um, selecting the brush is the, the next um, big difficulty. And it's um, not as difficult as this one. If it if it's more difficult, I, I actually going to to I don't know and make a bet right now. Oh. I'm surprised that that is working. Let's let's just try this. So that wouldn't mean we don't have to use reflection, which would be a little bit more, more convenient because reflection is generally very time consuming. 
just to get into it. Once you understand on, on a reflection, I, I bet there's people who write reflections and can be very fast with this. So let's clear this. And it says 10 all the time. Always says 10. And we'll always select the the wash first that I have selected in here, which is kind of nice. But then it will. Oh, this time it did. Pick another brush, right? But it will always um, keep picking the same brush, I guess. I think um, this selected is selected is over wooden here. So uh, maybe you have to introduce a new variable for that. <coughs> selected first. I don't know how, how this is overwriting this uh, itself. Uh, it might be on, up on, on update. I'm not sure. It looks like they, they are overwriting each other. Ten. Now it will always say ten, I guess. Oh no, I can't can't select anything. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> so we, we can't change selected for some reason. I don't really really understand what's happening here to be honest. Now it's working here, yeah, we, we can't. We can't make this automatically pick pick um our first choice. Um looks like a weird coding error. Now it should say 10. 10, yeah, okay. So we get the the correct brush, we can cast it. We have done it. So we're very close to 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 be able to edit uh, and end this <clears throat> so yeah it seems we can't select the the correct one first which is weird just have to say it it's weird and then, yeah and that's kind of a bug 
But let's not bother about that. People do, do mistakes. Um, and that, that pretty much seems like a bug. I don't. I, I did not see how we can make, mess it this up. Once we uh, press pick, it should it should actually use the selected um, se selected drop drop down. And not the one that we did set up inside of this um, for each. So, yeah, I, I don't know. Except. There's one more thing that we could try to do. And that is to set this up before we have this on GUI. And we have to make these static. Okay, here goes our next test. Is it going to work? I don't know. <laughs> Just testing. And it didn't work. Now it keeps our last selected brush sometimes. But it doesn't it does it does not initialize itself with um the, the correct um first selected one. So yeah. Unfortunate. Let's do this on GUI. And just don't do this. Fortunately, I have to skip that. Unfortunately. It's not working, but we still <coughs> we still have gotten everything else to work so let's get rid of everything that we don't need need here and this is bas basically what what we are left with now we have access to the br uh, brush class what do we want to do oh, that's a good question <laughs> I want to not actually have this. Um, I want to have a return here. Now we want to get um, something here. And that is a time map info.
Bosch dot No, all, all we want, want to do the, here is get this and put this brush inside. That's it. <laughs> and this here, this is what we will need later when we picked our brush. Now, I can get rid of most of this. Yeah, and then we then we can read it out later. I mean then then select um select the brush and then we can just edit things like sorting order sorting or we can't let's go into this I think these things are not public. So we need to make this public. And also this one public to override them. Yeah, this is actually the sorting layer. Yay! <laughs> okay, we can now test out this part. Let's test test this out. No, we can't test it out because we don't have uh, we, we we cannot set up the fields here. Instead of the tile map yet. So we still have a little bit um, a lot more work to do, but it's looking pretty good right now. Oh, we can. <sighs> we can put in grid brush bases here. We don't have access to them. Yeah, I know, I know. Hmm. 
Hm. Unfortunately, they don't have assets. Yeah, it's a little bit unfortunate. So, um, how do we initialize this? I don't know. Um, just skip this part, which is the most important one. <laughs> First, no. Um. We can't skip this, so we have to first try to set this brush before we can go on. Yeah, so we can't test this function yet. So, what, what do I want even? What's the purpose of all of this? It seems to be madness. But there's, uh, there's um, pretty much a big intent behind this. Uh, just to set the brush in the sorting layer. So when do I want to do this? Is at the beginning when we set up the um, layer. We have to find the function for that. Yeah, when, when we were doing this as a group. This is where we want to do this. Then here at the beginning, we, we would go through every of these uh, layers. And... We know the order and layer. We don't have to, to ask that. We also know... This is not the time map. What is it? This is the time map. It's a time map copy, that's also correct. So after I'm being instantiated, we're going to add a component. Time map copy, add component. Um, time map selection info. So I want to see, we did this before, oh, oh, this is the first time, and then we want to set immediately time map, uh, time map. copy dot get component, we can immediately set the sorting in layer, the order and layer. So now we are doing this automatically. Oh, order and layer has to be an integer. That's actually a good point.
Okay. And now comes the magic part. Where we open our window and select our brush. So. <coughs> Sorry. We have to, now we have to um, change this. So we want to have this. To not be, yeah, we, can, we can still make this a menu, menu item for testing. No, we don't want to, to have this to be a menu item. It should give us back a grid wash base. This is what we want to get back. So what, what are they doing here? Is listen, uh, adding a listener to the OK button. OK. Window. Dot. Um, let's maybe change this. Now we don't have, have this button yet, but um, we're still sitting up. So, how does he do it button here? Yeah? Like this. And then we need to invoke this when we click pick. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Also, don't need to cast in here anymore again. I think. Hmm. 
No, don't need this anymore. So oh, now, <clears throat> now we only need to fix this OK button. Hmm. I think yes, what would we do differently? Show drop down. Now I'm not sure if this works because uh, we changed a method there. We might be lucky and instantly works. Um, let's see where we were uh, in this class here. Things are getting really complicated. My head is really burning here. And I'm not just sick in my mind. I'm just sick uh, from programming too much and sick from, from illness. So there's a lot going in on here. Oh, okay. I wanted to make this group editing with the group editing function here. And then instead of here, should ask us. Okay. And the show. Big brush editor window, show drop down. Oh yeah, that works. Now I only need to look up if I edit this component correctly. So where did I add in? component last time okay they do it in here you can just do it like that oh, I wasn't too sure if, if a component is 
uh, working like this. And this is never going to work. <laughs> Oh, we have to set it dirty. Or else it will. Um, we have to. Got this object. Undo dot. Record object. Undo dot set or oh, set dirty set dirty did we use set dirty last time Okay. <clears throat> Let's see if, if this works. Wouldn't bother me if it's not working on the first try though. So we have this group here with time maps. Going to delete those. And just check in a new fresh time group here. Set this up. Background multiplayer six. Sorting order one. And I'll ask me a lot of questions here. I don't know. Let's put Okay. Okay, what did not work was twenty nine. Okay, I think that 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 has nothing to do with us. Clear. Yeah. I think the problem here, the, the brush here has not been set up. That's kind of annoying. Interesting, it's also trying to uh, set set something here up So th this causes an error, but I don't know um, what 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 um, the problem is. Yet. Let's maybe just debug lock something here. Oh yeah, it, it's not getting the brush, of course, yeah, uh, because the, the black brush is null, so we can ignore that one for now. So the brush is null. It 
So we could store an object inside, maybe. Since it, it's, it doesn't seem to, to be working with Porsche, so let's try to be more generic. So the problem seems to be when we when we do this stuff here, it's not putting in a, a brush. So let's try, try, try to do it like this. I'm sure, if this will cause an error again. But now the brush here should be an object. We might have to to put in the class though. To have, it, uh, have some kind of script class, and then it identify the um, brush by the class. I want to debug this. See, does it have um, a brush time map info? Oh, we can't even see that. That's unfortunate. Normal. <clears throat> okay. So, what's the next try? Instead of trying to store an object, we can try to store a class. We store a script class. No, um, how do we class store classes? C sharp store classes. Let's type. Now we have an error here. Because this does not give back a type, it runs a, um, a grid selection. Uh, <clears throat> and now this is an, is an error. And now we need this cast function. This cast function only works. Oh man. Oh, this is so annoying. I, I guess what what would be the, the best. I know this code works. So let's 
let's um, say <coughs> grid painting state um, grid brush base that was this. grid brush base brush Wash base uh, Come on, it was a good wash base again Oh, just a typo, okay. Okay, now we have to get the brush brace first, the correct one. And how do we do this? We have this um, brush here, which is going to be a type then. And I still don't know if this, even this is going to work. So, but if okay, we're just going to compare those two. So for each, grid brush base, um, um, like that. Used brush in a grid painting state grid brush brushes. If the used brush, if the, the if the type of Use brush. Uh, use brush. The type is equal to this type, and set our brush base to be a used brush. Okay, since then they are unique, this works. Um, it, 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 it's, it's still a, just a, a long shot. So yes, we're compiling. You can't say it's the type, even with 
debug, we can see this the, the type. It's worrying, worrying me a little bit. Okay. Null. Ah, when did this happen? Okay, let's try that try, try that out again. Just print, press enter real fast. And it's not wait, waiting for us to pick our brush. That's a problem. Sounds a little bit weird. You turn the type. It's a little bit weird that it worked before, like like we used um, like we could use it. So <clears throat> I'm a little bit irritated. It's not waiting. It's just not waiting for us. What? Okay, th this is of course not working. And yeah, it says this has no type. What? So let's reverse this to return the grid by brush base again. And
Maybe a place doesn't have a type. That's weird. Oh, suddenly we changed our algorithm. <coughs> this is really weird. The, uh, the order of execution is messed up. And it's really, really, really weird. So basically, it's not work. Uh, it's not waiting for the result here. Or this is returning a result immediately. I don't understand. This was working before, now it's just broken for no reason. What the hell did I do? I don't understand it. Why is that waiting? Why is it waiting in this case, but not waiting in this case? I have the feeling like it's just returning some random, random thing here. Yeah? Except, no, it never waited. It never did. That was why why it was um, putting up all these drop downs at the beginning. Yeah. <clears throat> so how do we make this wait until we uh, press OK? I don't know what, what the difference is between show and show model. Maybe model will wait and show will not wait. Yeah. Fixed it. We did it. Also, 
select this. So did I end up sorting layer? I forgot. This did set itself up to one zero up, but it could be it could be um an accident. Let's do that again. <coughs> or in layer 5. Yeah, whatever. Oh, it did set the, the, the wash lowest order. Yes, we did it. Everything is going according to, to curve to plan. No, it it says it has problems with uh, begin preview and preview. Oh no! Uh. <laughs> so yeah, we have to to do something about the preview here. But yeah, and we have to select the brush here. Okay, so the problem was never that that it did not save the brush. Actually, we can good base brush. Can try to save the grid base brush again. Again, <clears throat> so we are starting to lose my my voice. So let's maybe comment those two lines here out. Combine those. And then we don't have to to use uh, make any of these weird things here. Even though this is working, so okay, it's it's just one line of code change. Okay, let's we, let's do that again. And it seems that with this, we are finally um, there that we can can make our last test. We just have, yeah, it probably will still be half an hour of coding. After that, I will be gladly going to uh, end this stream, eat something, get get something for my voice because yeah, as I said, I'm a little bit sick right now. Let's set up this time map again. See if it works with wash. And it caused some kind of error. I don't know what I did there. See, it has this brush brush now as an asset, so that's great. That's great. It finds the correct asset. So let's see the other info. Sorting layer 1, order in layer 0. Uh, I don't know why it's a... all in layer, all in layer. I 
So it did not update the order and layer for some weird reason. That's weird. Oh, and it did put it in, in here now. So maybe I have to see when to repaint this. So let's write in here 20. Look, okay, it's not 20 yet. It's also not 20 now. It's a warning. It's still weird. Lowest order and layer here should set itself up to 20. Now it put itself to minus 45. Really? Okay, now I think we have to 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 make sure that they update correctly. And this this is some kind of um, unit unity magic. Um, has to do something with this, but I don't know exactly what. So let's copy this inside of here. What? Okay, we don't want to make a custom spectre. <laughs> Let's see if this changes the, the preview a little bit better. I'm not sure what, what exactly this does, but it's supposed to uh, make sure that it the preview is uh, going to be checked accordingly. Um, and if you don't do it with, with these methods, it's going to be weird. Actually, it doesn't do anything. It's weird.
And so we may just may maybe we are just um Using another wash. See debug lot lock found wash. Or we we or we need to compare the type because it's class and it's um, an instance of a class. Maybe some one of both cases. Yeah, it's not right writing that it found the class. So I guess um, we need to ask for their types. So we will use reflection in the end. We will use reflection in the end. And then let's see if this works. Found brush. Yay. But it didn't it did not uh, set itself up correctly. Clear. Found brush. It doesn't set the sorting layer. Set up brush. Found brush, but it did not set up. Okay. So. Where did it stop then? Maybe these those checks. Maybe they were wrong. Trying to find the error. Setup brush. Yay! You have been set up. Show yourself. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't refresh itself after we we um um set it up. So. How do we refresh this? Also undo. So let's record this if you want to undo the changes here. Um, Record object wash class and then uh, change wash change rush uh, change wash and then we want to set it dirty. So how we did, did we do editor utility set dirty I think set dirty because we're dirty boys and put in the brush class mm, 
<laughs> Not sure if, if that's uh, necessary. No, it, it just can can be buggy if you don't set it dirty. And so first, let's make this one one. It's one one. We didn't see it. If I press Ctrl Z, it's going to be reversed. Yeah, so I can record that I I record that I, that I changed that um, brush. It's pretty nice. I only have to update the the inspector now. Can we call this? Let's uh, see what this update does. It does not seem to be liked. <clears throat> yeah, it does not seem to be liked. So it's still a little bit buggy, but it's not uh, immediately um, immediately changing itself. So if I put in two two here, select this time map, and then. Let's open close these cells. Doesn't do anything. Okay, it didn't change itself yet because I uh, never changed the time map. Now it immediately did save itself, set itself to 2 2. Okay, that's weird though. 3 3. 3 3. What did I do? Oh, up update hidden grid layout. It seems to do it. We, we did it. We did it. We accidentally did it. Just was trying out something. Didn't think it would work. And it actually worked. What a, what a blessing. <clears throat> okay, last thing. And then we are finished. I want to automatically select the brush. But that we, we only have to maybe make some um, changes to, to the drop, drop down menu. So it, it um, asks us more nicely. We want to do. Um,
Okay, now it should automatically select the correct brush for us. It might be that it's not possible that we have to do this with the reflection method that we found. Because as I, uh, uh, as I saw, um, it once was internal, but they changed it. So <clears throat> maybe we're lucky here, maybe, maybe we're not. Oh yes, we're lucky. We're lucky. So we selected time map. It's automatically going to select the right brush for us. Setting up the sorting order. Setting up the order in layer automatically. We just can just paint without setting up anything. Holy. Oh, so we may be able to paint in 10 minutes now. Maybe, because we, we skipped a lot of steps. So we don't need this method anymore because, yeah, we, have, we managed to make everything work just like we want to. Um... Or maybe we want to something else here. Uh, override. So yeah, we won't always do override this sorting layer that we put that to true. Okay, then want to fix something else. And when we make the the group selection, let's first find the method. This one. Uh, where do we add the component? Yeah. Okay, now. We need to, to change the name. Of this, so it's more descriptive. Because now we, we have these drop downs, we don't know which layer we're working on. And name. So let's make it variable for that string. Um, uh, drop down name is going to be. Time map plus something plus um rush layer and um, all in layer. So we know what, what, what layer we are working on and put this as the title of the drop down. Oh no, 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 no. And then in this window, we want to have this string window name. It's 
going to be the title. Okay, I think that's it. And maybe is it. Okay, let's let's test it out. We actually uh, finished with this faster than I thought. And <laughs> that is uh, that is something that is very very rare. So here comes maybe our next test here. Let's get rid of this. Shifting. So we want to set up this shif shifting as it's very fast. As a group. Background, we want uh, six layers. Starting, or uh, starting order one. 0 to minus 50 the parallax speed from, from 0 to 30 so first layer is going to be bushes second layer is going to be trees third layer is going to be bushes again this time I want to add um walks after yeah walks after that after that i want to get some bushes again and then i want to have walks again <clears throat> now if i go in this time map here it's the first one in the back can just start drawing. Can okay, go to the next one? I can just start drawing. Go through the next one. Start drawing. Go to the next one. Start drawing. Go to the next one. Start drawing. Go to the next one. Start drawing. Okay, now for the foreground. Let's give them a common parent. For this foreground, amount of layers, six. Sorting order, 5, start order, 0, end order, minus 50, start parallax, 0, end parallax, minus 30. Okay, we are starting, to with, starting with vegetation. And then I want some um, leaves. And then, oh, I, I, I guess it was a, a bad idea to put in leaves, but it, but it doesn't matter. Then I want uh, brown rocks. I want bushes. And then I want um, just more rocks. Yeah. So now I can just cut here. And it's still the wrong layer. Just paint, paint here, and then that's a little bit. The the uh, it was a little bit of a bad idea to put the leaves here because now no, the leaves are going to move. And whatever, let's just hide that with, with all of these rocks we're going to spawn in. Put more stuff here. Put more rocks here. And even more rocks. <laughs> and 
Yeah, we're done. We're done in five minutes. This is this is great because um, previously this took half an hour to make, and now <coughs> we now have cranked this down. This whole process to be possible in five minutes. I mean, just just how 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 much better can you get? Yeah, now you if this set up. Five minutes, guys. Five minutes. You see these these layer um, underneath the player here. They're moving with the camera. That's not like that great in in this small window. Let's put this to to maximize. <clears throat> and when I said let's shrink this down to ten minutes, I actually did not believe that we would make it this easy. I I thought it would be still be. Hey, and I know I want to pick something else, and I don't know. But holy shit, how fast was that? I've never, never experienced like something like this. I know you see, it just works. It just works. This is incredible. This is so much nicer to work with. I still need to learn not to, to, to put too many things into the environment. I still have all the options that you could have, but I mean, this is amazing. This is just amazing. How fast was that? And setting up 12 layers. Now you could say, oh no, now you have 12 layers here. This is a mess. The next thing, I have this option here. Um, show only selected parallax. Oh, it's, it's bugging. But we need to initialize them first, okay. And now I only have these layers here. And then I can, can also say show the center. Oh, I, I still have all of them. <laughs> That's it. That's amazing. Now... <coughs> <laughs> what else do, would we like to to change here i would like to change that we also can pick up the the color um for each layer so let's add this as the last option also there's something else mm, not really and then tomorrow will be great and actually painting the maps will be great it will be, it will be so easy to to uh, to paint the map uh, maps if you just can do it in five in f maximum five minutes. If if you if this method, it's hard to get over five minutes because I do, I can just autopilot them. This is amazing. Maybe maybe one of the uh, best best uh, things that I've. Uh, experience since a long time in programming and it really says something and I'm so happy right now um, how good this works really I'm a little bit surprised that inside of these scripts here I don't find the grid brush brace So that's weird. They have been set up. So is it still working? No. Ah, it's not, it's not setting it up correctly. So we need, maybe I did um, not put them in dirty enough. So th this is something that sometimes happens. Let's see, does this all only uh, override one class well, property or how does this work? Max target is dirty. You can use to set it uh, dirty when you want to modify an object while creating 
and I do undo and TE, but still ensure they change as regulars and not last. Uh, we, sh we should make these fields inside of the um, time map are serialized. This. And then it should automatically um, put the information. I want to do to add the last field here. Color. Uh, time map. Color. And we want to this also to pick the time up color each time. So we can also say that the, that we want to override the color each time, and yeah, basically, um, th th this would make it even easier to to set to set up some kind of um, darkness effect with the um, the uh, the closer the the object is to the camera or. Um, the more it is um, far away from the camera. Now we we could put we could select the color for each layer, but let's let's be more lazy <laughs> as usual. usual. Um, I'm not going to do that. <clears throat> we are just um, selecting the start color and the end color and then fade automatically in each layer. That would be enough. So where's the group function? Yes, the group function. And then here in, in the beginning, we want to ask, um, we want to ask for the color. Look for color. Didn't we make um, a color window? This one, yeah. Show color picker. Oh, let, let, let's make a new function inside of here. And this is going to return a color. So, what, we, what do we do now is just um, steal all this uh, from the this basically it's just this function from our um, grid, grid brush breeze. Also, want to have a title. And then we just copy this, paste it inside. Try to to. Um, with the code here 
Okay. Then on OK button, we don't have an OK button. We have a button change. <clears throat> in action mm, it's using a system on OK button. just have to to try to get the, the syntax to work um that's basically basically it So it says you cannot access the button. I'm not sure why. But basically is um, the same as here. And public static. Public static. Action is not said to be private or something. Doesn't sh shouldn't make any difference. That should be the problem. And I think it's static. Yep. Yeah. Also need to make this static as well. And I should maybe be able to skip this now. Yeah, whatever. Um, <clears throat> not going going to make this much better. Um, so now we need to use this color picker. Pick our colors here. So let's get to our group function, which lets us 
uh, make our time map group in five minutes, um, which actually was supposed to be ten minutes. So yeah. Color, art, color. So need to give it a title. And the end color. So we have now the start color and what we want to do is the first layer just one is normal. You have the normal color and we might want to fade into black when we are going further into the back of the layers. So we have a nice effect there. We want to do this nice and automatically. I don't want to pick every layer and set up their, their color. No, no, no. Because if you want to do this in five minutes, never, never, never. <laughs> so then we need to set up the color here. Time map color. We need to define the time map color. And set it up. And we just have to um change the algorithm here. Just back so that it's going to fade. It's basically the same as every time with the shifting speed, salt layer. Yeah, <clears throat> does all of that automatically. It should and that should be it. Um, and now we have to set up the brush. I want to give this a color though. Color. What? Color. And the color here should be the color that you pick up. Here I want this to be color white. Start with white always. And here I just want to, this to be color maybe very gray. Gray. This is another gray. This gray, yeah, no, they're the same. Um, Um, before color, to um, define the color, default color real quick, 
default end color going to be in a new color um 0 0.2 and just how hard coded it uh, 0 0.2 0 0.2 one maybe maybe a little bit too much too dark okay and we have to do more no we don't have to do to do more this it it already has a title good <clears throat> good now um we need to, to set the color. So this will be the color. And there's also color here, but we have, don't have access to it. Except if we make this into a public field. Also this one will be public. So now we can change this and also we want to say override color is true. Yeah, that's it. I think we're done. Oh. Okay, let's set up, let's test the color picker. And after that, I'm definitely going to stop the stream because I've I got a headache. Holy shit. So, where, where do we want to draw? Maybe... Maybe... Right here. So, what we want to do is... We want to select... We want to draw here. How do we do this? Oh no. Just drag this point reference here. Over here. Let's put it here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be great. And now we just have to drag in shifting assets. And we want this to be to look good. We want it to to be um, like we would use it later. Position four. It's going to have two assets: one for back, one for front. Okay, we want to make the background here. And we only want um, in the background three layers of rocks because we don't have that much depth in the four layers that much of um, um, vegetation that we can put in start order is not going to be zero it's going to be um 10 10 30 uh, 10 20 End order is going to be 10. <clears throat> yeah, that's right. End parallax speed is 20. Uh, start color is white. I can't press enter. That's a huge bumper. And now I have to select the brushes. First one is going to be long vegetation. And then we will just have rocks. Let's have brown rocks. Dark, dark uh, rocks. And then we end up with brown rocks again. And set up the next one. The timer group. 
foreground it's going to be also just four layers sorting an order five start order can remain zero and order is mm, uh, 30 i think yep start zero and 20 minus 20 uh, and yeah We're starting with leaves, then we will have, and then we will also have brown rocks, and some gray rocks, and then again, brown rocks. Okay, now we have set up all these layers. Now I only want to work on them. Okay, I see. So I still see all of these points here. That's a little bit annoying. Um, but um, I can turn off gizmos. Okay, let's start. Where do we start? In the background. Um, which, was, which one is furthest in the back? This one. And yeah, I just have to paint now. That's it. There's nothing else to do than to paint. Just here, a rock, there, a rock. This is the furthest in the back. So. Can maybe make them even more in the back and put some here. So we have something in the, in the, um, in this area here. Okay, then we go to do the next branch. And yeah, we're just, oh, we're just going to add more rocks, I guess. What? Do we th see the, the rock through the, uh, do we see the rock through the ground? Was it always like that? Okay, I need to investigate what's happening there. Dark rock. In the background. Also, is this possible? Um... Oh, visible outside mask. So the dark rocks have white mask for some reason. Um. Yeah, I think it's an accident. Let's just keep going. It has nothing to do with our process here. Actually, I'm I'm throwing a little too many, too many rocks. We see the further I get with the layers, the um, more colorful the um, stuff is going to get. Okay, now I'm going to for the foreground. Just add in vegetation. Yeah, that's nice. Next layer. I think that's too close to the edge. Mm. 
Next layer. Add in a wall of gray rocks. And the last layer of rocks here. I still have to, to um, change the size, but I will do that tomorrow. I'm, I'm too much in, into scripting today. And I was too much into scripting today. And yeah, set up parallax transforms. Now we can immediately see when they are in the left part. That we have two rocks here that are over the edge. Let's see what happens if we are in the right position. And that's about okay. Let's put them back to the center. So here at the left position, these two rocks are too many. This one has to go and this one. And now I have to look into uh, black rocks. Dark rocks. Okay, <clears throat> and some of those have sprite mask, but not all of them. Oh, I know why. It's because they they've been set to foreground object here. Yeah. Okay. So now I have to select those dark box here and just remove the sprite mask. Hmm, that didn't do anything. What? Oh, it's because they have a child object now. It is a little bit annoying. Let's delete their child children. And delete it. Okay, now let's see. I think this time I need a little bit more than five minutes. But it was still a great experience making these these box. Immediately seeing um that somewhere too too far to the left with the color function that we have. And now I can just go there and try to look at them. <clears throat> I will still see a rock there. Okay. Well, ah, I see. So what's not working so well here is because the um, the background is not shifting, it's weird that the rocks are moving actually. Okay, so that's really weird, yeah. So we either have to make this background shift with the with the camera, or to remove the background. Yeah, there's also some some options here that we might want to do with each layer automatically. We might want to 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 increase. I want to increase the scale automatically. I don't want to set this the up uh, the scale up in the in the editor. Um, that's something I want to do. So yeah, I'm going to uh, to try to make the scale generated. It's going to increase the quality by pretty much. Um. Let's take a look at the left part here. Yeah, it actually told me told me that there's some parts overlapping. Oh. Hey, yeah, but what? Okay.
Ah, I don't get the walk. So, was it this walk? Let's, let's see. This is brown walk 14. Okay, let's just copy the name. Fortunately, it's hidden. And this one, this was, one was too much far apart to the left. But with our function, we can imme immediately see that. Yeah. And yeah. Can hit play one more time, see if we overlooked something. And yeah, after that, I'm saying it has been nice. It lo really looks looks awkward at the, this moment moment here, yeah? where you press the background and the background is not shifting. But yeah, you get a really nice parallax effect with this. could also use a, maybe a brush with brown and gray rocks here because this is a little bit too obvious what we did there yeah but we could set this up on the fly it's no problem yeah so i would say it's time so thank you for tuning in so far it has almost been 12 hours and I would say big thank you, uh, big progress today. Really had a moment there when I was set, uh, trying to set up my timer in five minutes, uh, in ten minutes, and it actually only took me five minutes. This is a great achievement actually, and it's really, really, really um, fun to make this time up now because it's it's not a grind. It's it's um, just doing what you you want to do and setting up in. In a matter of seconds, this is such an, an, an amazing achievement. Even though it did cast a lot of stress and nearly would break down on my side, there, um, keeping keeping on working on it, keeping on working at it, and keeping on working on it until it finally ha um, is um, ni nice to use. Really, um, is uh, a nice feeling. Just. Having that kind of achievement feeling there, uh, not gonna lie, and um, I'm um, yeah I'm very excited to work with this tomorrow. And tomorrow, um, I I will maybe not uh, not uh, script as much. Set up the scale of the objects is not going to be f uh, too to be uh, hard, and then we just have to to make sure that each ob object is going to have. Um, a reason a reasonable uh, size compared to the others because some of the objects right now uh, some of the rocks are way bigger one of the brushes is three times as uh, big as the smallest one we have to to um, go into other prefabs and fix that but that's actually not that hard so um yeah i'm very excited um for tomorrow because um we will definitely be, be finished with testing for tomorrow and definitely be finished with all the brush settings. I said this a lot of times. Um, so yeah, I'm 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 also also uh, I'm also looking forward to what kind of surprises am I going to bring to the table to delay myself even further, maybe. 
But um, I think I think the progress that I made so far, yeah, with the with the um, um, drawing of assets into into each layer, is just really really nice, and it feels it just feels nice and fast how to set up all these layers at once. Okay, so thank you for watching so far. Join me tomorrow if you if you want to and. I hope you have a wonderful, nice night.